hit the south and bend. Charges on the beat.
Bambara. Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba. Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba, Kili Bamba. What I want? Yes, what you want today? Yes, what you want today?
Okay, indeed, turn to spawn. Yes, sir. Spoon to Spoon, Spoon FM, Spoon Radio, Spoon 107.5 FM. I'd like to say welcome to another fascinating show. This is the Spoon Talk. We are back live on your radio, Spoon 107.5 FM. We're live on um, Fabric 101.1 FM and Super 95.5 FM. Um, we are live across the country and on several frequencies. Uh, we're live on Premier FM in Bonn County, Trust FM in uh, Bowman County, Trend Radio in uh, Grand Crew County, and of course, uh, a host of other radio stations across Liberia, Gibi FM in my Gibi County, Kakata specifically. I'd like to say welcome to Liberians across the country who have tuned in on uh, this 25th day of March, this edition of Spoon Talk. Uh, we are uh, also live across the internet. I want to say thanks to our thousands of followers across the world, over half a million followers on, on Spoon TV and, and, and on YouTube and, and across uh, the internet. I want to say thanks to everyone for joining us tonight. It's going to be a fascinating show, a great conversation coming up. This edition of Spoon Talk is heavily loaded with lots of information that you don't want to miss out on. So I'd like to say welcome again. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Nelson Collette, and um, today uh, we will uh, bring you up to speed with some of the happenings, and um, we are going to take your calls as well, and then following that, the actual show will begin. But before doing that, let me quickly go to the background and bring in Dr. Richardson. I see she's already set, ready to join us. Dr. Richardson, Hello. It's good to have you on again. Welcome to the show. Nelson, hello. How are you doing? How are Liberian people? Yeah, Liberian people are moving on gradually. Uh, James used to say, God money us. Yeah, well, that's we really need God to be money us. <laughs> yeah. No, we're good. moving on gradually. Even though some people can always say we're giving God a hard time, but I think God can take us on. <laughs> Seriously. God can take us on. God will be God. Yeah, certainly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. how was your weekend? Oh, yeah. My weekend was... Yeah, it was good. Yeah, my weekend was good. Um, Yeah. I'm glad that I'm here again. You can't, you can't remember what you did, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Too many things. Too many things going on all at once. Yeah, but my weekend was good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll take some calls, and um, I'll be right here listening and taking notes. And um, then we can open the phone line. Yeah. So, uh. Before taking uh, some calls, uh, I wanted to just uh, 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 throw a little bit of light on some of the training issues. That's and great. Then, yes, that's the yeah, then we can then we can hear from the Liberian people, get to know exactly uh, what the issues are that are of concern to them. And yes. So um, I didn't realize that you didn't do that already, but go ahead. Yes, do that, please. Yeah, so uh, there are lots of uh, happenings in the country, so many things happening all at the same time. Well, uh, the the issue with uh, war and economic crimes court is still a major talking point in Liberia. And um, the, uh, as the conversation progresses, the mm -hmm. River G County former senator, Senator Komeni Wise, Mm -hmm. um, I've been expressing some concerns about that as well. Over the weekend, he said that the establishment of the War and Economic Crimes Court will be a disservice to the warring factions in um, Liberia, you know, and um, he had a very strong opinion to express. Uh, according to him, he witnessed uh, several... Uh, you know, witnessing several things that happened during the civil unrest and also considering what happened um, after 
the the different warring factions decided to lay down the guns. Uh, there was this uh, uh, a a crab piece, um, you know, agreement, and then the TRC came into place. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, some of those warring factions went before that very body. They they confessed. They they apologized. Uh, they expressed themselves. Say what they did. Some were remorseful. Some weren't. But at the end of the day, he thinks that um, moving the country forward, you know, focusing on other areas of priority, is just the way to go now, and not the direction of war and economic crimes court. Uh, so. Uh, he expressed uh, some views in that regard over the weekend. Yeah. So, on the flip side, um, on yeah. Friday, Nelson. Yeah. I got to do a uh, eval on a family who experienced the war in our country. Mm -hmm. We think that after all these many years. There will be less crime. There will be less worries. There will be, you know, psychological wellness. But to my surprise, it was very painful listening to this woman who I believe when the war started, they were in Lufa, the era of Bubuli, she told me. Okay. And she lost, I believe, maybe two brothers huh. and one of them was very you know protective or her help her watch the children during the war and he, he got killed so they got relocated and suddenly displaced in Morovia okay and there was also you know other sicknesses that developed but there's a, there's a lot of pain. I, I realized, I mean, I hear a lot of this noise, a lot of this sorrow. There's a lot of people going through pain. And I don't know, maybe somebody said sorry to them publicly. Maybe this was done. I have not heard it. Many of the people that I've spoken to, they just said that people are dying. Being the way I've talked to them. So I don't, you know, I don't know. I know that giving people an opportunity to verbalize how they feel, to know that somebody cares about them is, can, is very helpful. It's very helpful. It may not change, it may not make our economy <laughs> the best, you know, but it will make some people mentally healthy. That's, that's just a quick thought about that. I mean, we have to brainstorm. We really have to brainstorm how do we want our country to move forward? Yeah, yeah, seriously, and and this 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 issue is a is a critical one. Um, Liberians have different opinions when it comes to the issue of war and economic crimes court. Yeah, and and this is just where we are, and now we're looking forward to seeing how it plays out mm -hmm. uh, for the next uh, couple of months especially when the Senate uh, returns from the, the break, you know, what's going to be happening? How are they going to take on this conversation? I remember before the Senate uh, went for the break and they introduced that issue immediately when it was passed. It, it, it then surfaced on the floor at the Liberian Senate. It was being discussed a bit and then they decided to go, um, uh, have some clarity around that before proceeding, before going any further with that conversation about war and economic crimes court. Uh, some senators were confused as to whether it was a bill emanating from the lower house or uh, whether it was a resolution. And in the case of a resolution, which kind of resolution? Joint resolution, um, you know, you know, and there were just some concerns around that, which so, was uh, addressed. So they can't track the record on that. Nobody can track what it is. Yeah, some senators then uh, provided pieces of information, what they knew about it. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was being said that they would have returned on the next day to uh, further mm -hmm. expand on the conversation, which uh, we looked forward to. And then in no time came in uh, the break, 
the whole thing about the breaking me. So mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing how the go how, how everything is gonna you know uh play out there at the Senate. Mm -hmm. Yes. But you know, and you know, I just a thought just came to mind, Nelson, and the thought is I believe that people living outside of Liberia, like people in the diaspora have been vicariously traumatized. And I think that you have a voice in this decision process. Um, because, you know, a lot of people, a lot of family members, my family, they didn't leave because they wanted to leave. They were running from guns and people. Imagine somebody as old as my father, hmm. a, young, a young who told me stories, a young boy told him, Drop your pants, otherwise I will tap you. Yeah. And until that was his, the message he got, he was almost dying until he got to um, the Ivory Coast. And he didn't want to die in this country, neither was neither did my mom. They would have preferred to die in Liberia on the dying bed. They were talking about they were they didn't get to live their life. They, <laughs> they didn't get to. The life was cut short. So, yeah. you know, so seriously, even though we may not have been there, but we experienced for every time my parents, my family couldn't find food and they would call me or they kind of go to articles. We had a foot they built over here, find room for them. The people are finding room for the family in Brown Brown Camp. People are finding, I'm hearing echo myself, um, Nelson. Um, so uh, um, yeah, so we really we'll have to discuss this whole yeah. Issue, but I think that Liberians, because I, I, a lot of Liberians are vicariously traumatized, they have not even yeah. scratched the surface of how they feel, and many of them were burdened and traumatized by they were not they may not have been during the entire war, but families were there every day. We're watching them, we were hearing them on BBC. Some of us lost our families. I lost my older sister in she's buried in Brown Brown Camp. I don't even know if she still have her a, a, a bear side because you know they're demolishing the camp. Um, but I try I know I had to travel to Ghana to bury her there. But so all of those things, you know, popping up for people around you. Yeah. So um I, I just want to conclude now with the uh Go ahead. the the uh the the updates you know mm -hmm. and then uh, so then the next thing is uh over the weekend there was uh this concern raised by uh mr simeon freeman of the Mo movement for progressive change he participated in the just ended election mm -hmm. according to him mm -hmm. um the 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 2024 draft national budget is a scary one with majority of the money uh, budgeted being recurring expenditures, according to him, mm -hmm. uh, this budget, which is in the tune of 900, uh, 692 million, will see 92.5% going back to government officials for payment, for payment and servicing, uh, servicing of debts. You know, and he thinks that um, this is below the belt. According to him, the government should have given more priority to uh, the payment of debt owed by the LEC and um, making sure that the electricity situation is resolved before uh, even talking about bringing appointing officials or looking at other areas. And, and the fact that that did not happen, he has some critical views with respect to the whole budget thing. And uh, another one is that there was this... Uh, how you doing, Nelson? Oh, <laughs> I'm using another screen, so I was not even looking at uh, CEO oh, is good. I'm see you that. I got five five tabs open right before me. <laughs> well, enjoy, but thank you for the overview. We, it's a very, 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 very basic Monday. Yeah. We got a lot of developments, uh, so we just go right into it. But as always, Nelson, you're going to be a happy man in the next two weeks because all of your 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 mothers, your sister, they're all on the way to Liberia. So I know oh you're going to, your, your, your <laughs> father going to stop boarding. <laughs> See, they, got, they, got, they got some some for that, right? My father boarding. 
Yeah. The last yeah. one for that. When the song came in, the former president said, when your partner bowling, it means that the cold. So you just got to put more fire on it for the part to ball. <laughs> yeah, so your partner... Yeah. I think your, your part about to start boarding because people oh, ask me, what do you want me to care for nursing? What do you want me to do? I say, hey, because they're going to spoil you again. Yes, <laughs> you the, <laughs> the, the whole thing, my phone has started ringing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the the, the sort of father had a, the oh my the other day. You know, you receive it. Ask Dama for it. I send it to Dama. Did he get rid of you? <laughs> or Megan to all. Megan to all. We'll handle things. <laughs> yeah, <I> know, yeah. <laughs> we want to say thank you, Nelson. Dr. Richardson, how you doing? Doing good. A little under the weather, but doing good. Thanks for asking. How you guys are doing? Yeah, I've been sick all the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, when I get sick, I don't sit down. You know, I got to keep on keeping on. Mr. Duadu, how you doing, sir? Hey, we're good, man. We thank God. I, I'm kind of disturbed, Dr. Richardson. Uh, I know the rest of the team want to come, Dr. Bowplay, uh, Mr. Samuel Jackson, Mame. As if I took my eyes a dough. But I'm taking back. Thank you, Mama, Glendy, and Katina. Oh, because I didn't name your sister there, so you try to hold me on it now. Andrew, Mama, Glendy, Fatima, Jackie. Yes. Ed, Remy Gray. Yes. So if I don't call your name, don't come tonight. <laughs> but Dwaru, I'm taking back. I, I, it's about time to dis, discuss the issue about the 4,500 that were given to CDC lawmakers. Nelson, we, we, I'm hearing myself, Nelson. Can you work on it, please? Uh, yeah, get I mean, let's go in the back and work on it. Yeah. And, okay, so it was from Nelson. So, um, We just got to say the truth, Duadu. Mm -hmm. To save Liberia, we got to say the truth. To save Liberia, we got to speak on the issues of today. I know you will say, well, the said Joseph Jenkins Rabbit style, you know, it started from Charlie King time. Like we would say, right? But today, the fierce urgency of now, Duadu. The reason why we're taking your time because you came in late. You know, you, you get the first 30 minutes. But let's just use something of oh, this. Oh, for you, first of all. You sure? Yeah, I was in the back. They, they brought you on before me. I was like two seconds here before you. So what I see now, what you can see. You know who is, you know who in the back right now? Oh, in the back. So it means that you are not seeing, you are not in the war room. I'm in the war room. Okay. You got Dr. Popler in the back. So I came before wow. you. Okay, geez. but you didn't see me. But again, Dwaru, it's not about you know, it's about the fierce urgency of now. Yeah. I, I, this four thousand five hundred that folks been talking about, is it really true? That Sylvester Grisby signed on the document that each lawmaker should receive from J. Mark a voucher of 4,500. Is it really true? Is it really true <laughs> that even up to today, lawmakers are questioning what the source of that income, where were, it, where, where, where were you guys getting it from? But let's just put that aside. Uh, what I have in my possession, which will be the bond share today, to all Liberians, and I'm about to share with you guys is, prior to Jose Yeman Buarca taking over President Buarca, some illegal transactions were made. And, and on a serious note, this has a very serious effect on our government of today. 
So I'm going to share with you guys. I want you guys to review it and let's talk about it. Let's show it to the librarian people what Obama shared. Because there was a JPTT team from the incoming government to the outgoing government that came together and established what they call the inaugural committee. How much will they will be spending $650,000? But I have gone around, I have asked over and over, can a president elect, not a president yet, I have taken off the son of uh, the order of office, can a president elect authorize from any ministry or entity the use of any government form prior to taking office January 22nd? Twelve no. Dr. Rudolf, Rudolf Brooklet, welcome to the show. Um, Mr. Dwight. Thank you. It's good to be here. Thank you. It's good to be here, Dr. Richardson. Always good to see you, Mr. Dwalo, and all the people behind you. It's always good to see you. Perspective elevates the conversations. As a CEO. Thank you. Thank you very special. much. You're making a difference. Thank you very much. I want to say thanks to Sister. I think it's Sister Reduado, River Sess County. Yes, sir. Uh, they are monitoring us by radio. Uh, Sister River Sess County, shout out to you guys. Yeah. And everyone else that monitor. Mr. Dwadu, let's hear you. We'll go to Dr. Richardson. Uh, um, we made a mistake and we call her Dr. Chinaway and her husband, A.B., said, no, 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 no. She's Dr. Richardson, not Dr. Chinaway. So let's get it right, Dr. Richardson. I to mean, my people heard. in ancestral, my mother's hometown, it's a bit since you're new on world. David Diaz, I get the book of your morning, huh? If that is just a guest, I've been young, young. Once you see a mirror, you and you. But let me say this to my people across the country. Look. Stanton as for the $4,500. Dr. Brooklyn, welcome to the show as well, Dr. Francine. Regarding the $4,500, I'm a little hesitant to speak on this because I don't want to think this is true. But by the same token, this is Liberia. So I did read a publication today from Front Page Africa. Um, I didn't see too much there, there, but there's something brewing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my horses for now until there is sufficient evidence to be able to come up and say, you know what, without any equivocations whatsoever, the money was actually issued. But I don't know enough yet. For, for what I've read, I don't know enough yet whether this money is actually true and this money is out there. Uh, if this is true, for some of us that we don't know how to butt our tongue, for people that can say, oh, Dwala, you supported this administration, so that means whatever the administration does, I should support it. This is not me. This is not me. I will continue to say this on this platform, everywhere I do go. Liberia must matter far above each of us, irrespective of the position that person holds. If whatever that person is doing contravenes or contradicts or, or counter the direction that we want this country to go, we should all frown upon it. Because Sesto City does not have running water. For me, I don't like to place blame in that fashion, but I, I'm, 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 I, I, I'm bothered right now as to what is happening regarding this money, if this is true. I'm doing some research. I need more. Now, if the accusation is going to uh, Minister Grisman, I think he should say something about this, whether it's true or not. But right now, stand on, there's not sufficient evidence for me to be able to speak on it. Dr. Brooklyn. Thank you. Before Dr. Richardson come in, uh, or we can wait when everybody speak, and I will tell you whether it is true or not, and I will tell you uh, the activities of Sylvester Grisby today to speak on this 4,500 voucher for JMI. Because uh, I know the story. I spoke to folks, Dwalu, and you can believe me when I'm come on national platform like this to tell you whether it's true or whether it's a lie. Because we know we have some conversation, but I waited too long, Dwadu, almost a week when this thing came up because I wanted to cross my teeth and duck my eyes. So let's hear Dr. Richardson. Let's hear Dr. Brokler, who is in Liberia. And then 
I will tell you exactly what I know about the 4,500 voter that was sent to lawmakers that voted for Richard Kuhn, and then we can take it from there. Dr. Richardson, please. Yeah, um, I'm bothered by this uh, that looks like play to play. Uh, we thought we were putting play to play to rest a little bit behind us and moving forward. But uh, I, I, I want to, there's an there's a effort coming for me. Okay. Um, I want to hear more about it. Uh, I, I expect this government to do better. I expect the people around this government to do better. But we know that, you know, there are people in Liberia who are just there for the money, not for the development of our country. So I'm waiting to see how it how you know the money situation unfolds so i'm waiting i'm, I'm eager eager to hear stanton what you know about it um but i hope it is not play to play as we know it thank you very much uh dr Brooklyn. so so i i i have the the front page africa paper here that was one of the the, the dailies that carry it was carried also in, in other dailies. But on the front page, it has the picture of Representative Yeke, and he's holding something of the picture. Um, mm -hmm. The photo here is not as clear, but he's holding up something and he's saying, like we've discussed briefly, that there's a $4,500 coupon given to him um, and others, right, as, as, an, as part of an effort to unseat Speaker um, uh, Kofa, right? So for me personally, I'm glad, uh, um, Stanton, you have some more information because I think you, you you'll, whatever light you throw in, it will be helpful for the uh, listening audience. But here's the thing. So the two things for me, just and I only go on what I know, so I'm not going to do any speculation here because I don't think that's healthy for the national conversation. One, the what is concerning, okay? The what, what is it? He said four to five hundred dollars. They give it to me, and you know, I send my people to pick it up, and other people to give it. The what is concerning because if that's what happened, then we really need to hear the whole story because that's concerning. But it's the why, the why, that's that challenges common sense to me, okay? The what we want you to sway you, whatever. But the why, the why is. We want to give you something so you can help us on speak on seat the speaker. Well, guess what? We already had elections for the speaker. And unless you go in for some kind of impeachment hearing, you can't just on seat the speaker. So maybe they they putting something together to raise it to the level of impeachment. If that's the case, then we show sure we need a whole lot more information. But I will say this, I think it's becoming a little draining, at least for me, on my spirit, that at the beginning, in the first 60 days, we keep getting all these crazy stories instead of one big story that mobilizes the nation and motivates people and get us all fired up that, gee, we are going in the right direction. So these little stories have the propensity to drain the energy of well-meaning Liberians. And I hope that we can get a handle on this because it's really starting to become concerning. But that's all I would say right now because the CEO say he has more information and we would love to hear what additional information he has. And Jamama, welcome. Always good to see you. Thank you very much, Dr. Proplet. Let's welcome again. Uh, Minister Watercolly to the program. Minister Watercolly, uh, what's up? What's on your mind? Thank you for joining us. Uh, we sat in the conversation with this 4,500 voucher from JMI. Hmm. Good evening to everybody around the world. Hi, to and, uh, Thanks for the show. I said previously that um, we have to have information on the 4,500 voucher. I have no information on it. So later on, maybe discussing it, then we'll know. But right now, I don't want to give it any credence, honestly. That is my problem. And another thing that on my mind, the next item 
is I would like for us to talk about the rubber, uh, plant, uh, rubber association problem that they have in, in Liberia, where JT has taken over everything and he told everybody that unless he not jetty, he will make sure he close all the factories will close down and they will be forced to sell to him. And I think it's very, very unfair. So I just want to bring that up. So all the rubbers in the port are only for jetty. All the, rub the rubber sellers and those who got factory, like Mr. Gabriel Rabber, he has a factory. I went there today in Kakata. I saw it with my eyes. The Liberians that he hire, they are not working anymore. They're sitting down because the president passed a certain law that um, they, nobody should sell rubber anymore. But look, they are giving Jetty 90 containers are in the port right now. He's passing a container through a guy called Mr. Brewer. And what are they doing? They're shipping that container. In two to three days time, they'll be shipping it. And Liberians who got a rubber and have opened a factory and hire many, many Liberians to put food on the table. Those people are not working anymore. They sit down. You. Our jetty is going to be shipping his rubber from the port. 90 containers. While other Liberians just linger around. Thank you very much, Andrew Mama. Thank you very much. And folks, again, please share our program. This is the Spoon Talk. We always love to have you. We always love to have this interaction because it is important for us all to sit down and discuss on the issue when we talk about Liberia. Once again, welcome to Spoon Talk. I know the rest of the guys will be joining us shortly. Let's start a conversation. I know something is happening at Noka. You guys follow the story concerning the officer in charge, Jake Kabakori. Uh, we will discuss that issue at local. It's all on the on social media. Uh, the allegation that he squandered six hundred thousand dollars. We need to discuss it. Um, information from Social Security NASCAR that Sylvester Grispe, prior to President Waka taking over, he requested one hundred and eleven thousand United States dollars to buy five vehicles. 111,000. This is the bomb share for today. I'm going to put this information in the chat room uh, while you guys go over it and we'll come back to this uh, uh, conversation about the 4,500. But what we have in our possession, 100, 111,000. Uh, you are not including the duty free request that was made. A letter was sent, I know you're not in our chat room, Dr. Blood. I'm going to send it to you. I forgot, please, if you can just send me, hey, I will send it to you. I cannot find your phone number right now. But it's in the chat room, guys. Uh, why? Why was the request made by Sylvester Grispin? At the time, he wasn't the Minister of State. So I want to give you guys a few seconds, Dwado. It's all in the chat room. I want you guys to go over the full document I just put. We got so many documents from other entity. Why was Sylvester Grisby request from National Social Security, NASCA, 111,000 as per the document in our possession? Santo, let, let, yes, let me get this. But First I want to do it step by step, Dan Duadu. Can we finish the 4,500? I just gave him the topic up. I understand. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead then. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. I just put it up the topic because we got to discuss no car with Jacob Akori. We got to discuss this bond share that we just received. You guys have have it right now. It's in our chat room. Um, Mr. Bubler, you have it? Not yet? Uh, we're not hearing you, sir. Did, did you receive it? Um, uh, let's see. I really want you to have it then we can... Uh, for us to have a good conversation. Yeah, I got, I, I got it. The one from um, Capitals Motors Incorporated. Yes, yes, thank Sorry, you. So, yeah, it. so, so the document. I mean, we, we can share the document, but let's come back to the forty-five hundred, which is big. It is true. It is true. This document that you are seeing today, uh, Minister Watercutter, you said, well, I don't know whether this is true. This document is true. It's legit. 
I'm saying I want librarians to understand, you know, the and myself will go back and forth, but this document is legit. Those that voted for Richard Kuhn, this is a legit reward. So Yeke is not lying. I want to be on the record. Yeke is not lying that this is fake. It was signed by Sylvester Grisby. As you can see, uh, whosoever signed it from the office of the Minister of State. Wow. Did they give 4,500? Uh, when I spoke to individuals, I'm not calling names. It's not because they want to remove Funati Kofa. No. They gave this money as a thank you for the guys then to go take this coupon to JMAD and buy furniture for their offices, Mr. Dualu. My sources are representative at the Capitol building, not Yeke Koruba. So when I ask, again, I'm not calling in. When I ask people, Dr. Brooklyn, who would pay for this coupon? It's not free. You'll go down to JMI to collect offices and, you know, shares, furnitures. Who would pay for it? Because they say, oh, no, it's just a credit. I agree. It's a loan. I agree. Why would you term it? But at the end of the day, who's going to pay JMA the amount? So let's go down the line and see how many lawmakers voted for Richard Kuhn. Some people say 31, some people say 34. If we take the top number, 34, it will be 153,000 United States dollars. And then I ask question. If you want furniture and you think that you guys really need the furniture, couldn't you go to a library owned business? Number one. Who approved this? Is it approved by the president or just Sylvester Grisby? My answer was President Barker knows nothing about this. So if President Barker knows nothing about it, then Sylvester Grisby is operated as Sylvester Grisby, Minister of State. I push and I ask them this question because I had a doubt about Yekia Koduba. I understand he went back to the store, he met the man and whatsoever. He went to the Labrador National Police, it's all over. I had a strong doubt, like every one of you. So I asked people from Unity Party. The only reason why they call Yeke and gave Yeke his own is because Yeke voted for Richard Kuhn. So they wanted to be generous. So they call Yeke. I said, are you sure? They said, yes. So we call Yeke, we give it to Yeke. It's not physical cash, but it's coupon. But the man making business, that's his business. The man want his money. So where is the money coming from? It's not about, I am convinced, it's not about removing Fonati Kofa. I'm done with that, that's a problem for Mr. Dwalu. It's about what's the source of this money? And why are you giving 4,500 to lawmakers? And the answer was to say thank you to those that voted for Richard Cohn. And because they voted for Richard Cohn, we want to appreciate them. So now you know the story. Because I challenge. And this is why I put my credibility on the line. I challenge the Unity Party lawmakers to say that's a lie because they cannot look at me to say that's a lie. I frown upon it. I am mad because that's not the way to do business. That's a problem. I am mad because I think we are on the wrong track. So for one week, I've been thinking. Should I say it? Should I ask more questions? Should I investigate further? And the answer they gave me, I 
I'm all right. Are we good? Yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah. the answer they gave me, and that's their answer, is not to remove Fulanti Kofa, but to appreciate those that voted for Richard Kuhn. So, 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 Mr. so Mr. Now, hold, on, wait, hold on one minute. Let me go with it. I'd love to start from that. Uh, um, uh, Richard saying who will come oh. in first, yes, and then we'll go to Mr. Duarte. We'll come to you and uh, our auntie and your mama. That's what Richard saying. Something does not sound good to me, you know. If it was like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck. So, this is a uh, corruption happening play for play. Why would we want to give senators money for vote for doing a job? They for voting, right? Voting for corn. Why why would we want to give them money? And in the end, you know, Liberia government gotta pay. Liberia taxpayer or donors have to pay for it. So it is not adding up to me. Something is not sounding right to me. Four thousand five hundred dollars well, that loan, that credit, that is not adding up to me. Then for us to hear that. The president did not know. I'm getting tired of that story that the president didn't know. It's it's not how why why does he not know? You know, who's in charge? Who's disrespecting the president? Who's not keeping him informed? So those are all the questions that I have. But uh they, we shouldn't be paying nobody money to vote to do their job. Four thousand five hundred for somebody to do their job is not it doesn't sit well with me. That's what I have to say about that. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show, Glenny. Welcome, my mate, Mr. Duardo, please. Stanton, we do have um, GSA. I think it's a general services agency that's responsible for every government purchases. Why is somebody going over GSA to purchase something? The perception of this government that is being developed, I don't like it. Uh, whether it's true or not, so far, I don't like the perception. Now, I want to say this to, to, to the president directly, sir, <laughs> we give everything for this. You cannot sh put us to shame in this fashion. If this is going on, you must nip this in the bud very quickly. The claims that you don't know about is not sufficient. You are the boss. I will say take control of this and let him speak to it publicly. This is not okay by me. Stanton. Just to add before we go to the next group, okay? I can say to everyone today, Sylvester Griswold was called by the Speaker of the House, Fernando Kofa, today on this issue. And he was told to bring his lawyer along. Today, Sylvester Griswold, the Minister of State, I don't want anybody saying that's a lie. He was called today by the Speaker, J. Fernando Kofa, and he was told to bring his lawyer. But he met Speaker Kofa without his lawyer. Now, 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 let me say this. And let me let me say this. We can laugh, we come here, we joke with each other, but it is concerning my fellow Liberians. And I'm getting tired. I'm not getting tired because of the message we preach, like Mr. Duaru said. I'm getting tired because in less than three months. We find ourselves, or a little over three months, how you record it, we find ourselves in a situation that we would not be able to handle. Mr. Duaru, sorry, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bopler, please. So we got problems on multiple levels. First, is the Ministry of State responsible to provide furniture for the legislature, whether it's a thank you or not. Two, um, if it's a thank you, is this a donation from J-Mart? Because if it's not a donation from J-Mart, then we need to know exactly where the money is coming from for these, because J-Mart is not a Red Cross. J-Mart is a business. I purchased from them. They're a business. And so if you have a coupon for 4500 Per person time, a whole bunch of persons. You're talking about good chump of change, like 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 the CEO mentioned earlier, hundred and some thousand dollars. So who's paying for it? Three, what kind of example does this show? You want to thank people for voting, call them to your house, do some roast meat and say your thank you. Don't take money that you know J Mark is not donating this stuff. 
Somebody has to pay. So it is becoming problematic because we keep having these repetitive things. And I want to speak to the president. I said before, you know, he has an opportunity to be a legacy leader. Well, Mr. President, you got to go from sitting to standing and from explaining to directing the activities of your people. Too many things are cropping up that has the propensity to drain people's energy, to diminish more authority. And if people don't like the example, they're not going to follow you. So it will be at a standstill. It's time to correct some of these foolishness because we don't need it. We got to see what, give coupons to the public schools, please, so they can have Chuck and they can have crayon for the children and eraser. Stop all this nonsense. Keep giving the people who already have a lot more. It is wrong. It is wrong. And we need an explanation from the government. We need a quick, we need about the more money. But we do. We do. I challenge lawmakers, before I go to Andrew Mama, Glenny, uh, my brother Mame, Samuel Jackson, welcome. I said, do welcome. I challenge folks to come and say, well, you can lie. Because no, I spoke to those I spoke to. Those are lawmakers. And I told them, given enough time, I'm going to discuss this issue. I don't want anyone to say, well, you can lie. You can get lie. You can lie on me a hundred times. We know that. But Glenny, and your mama, I know who I talk to, and they cannot challenge me. And nobody should say it's a lie. The 4,500 were given to each lawmakers and said some of them refused it because they voted for Richard Cohn. My only question I ask there, Andrew Mama, who paid for this? Take it away, Minister Wooden Cody. They have any proof to say that whatever is alleged that they have within the possession, the voucher is being paid to them because they voted for Richard Kuhn. Do they have any documentation towards that? Do they have any voice recording? Do they have anything that says that whatever voucher they have is for that? So the Cuba of Ghana- Are you asking me? Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you whether they have that. If you if you ask me this question, and that's a credible network, I'm gonna call some representative name, yeah, and you will you will not like it. If you want me to, I can call those representatives I have spoken to. And I don't think it would be fair to do so. But if you insist, I am the proof that yes, indeed. They gave these coupons because I spoke to them. Not one, not two. I'm talking about representative of Unity Party. When people want to play politics, they should play politics, Glendy. But when we come here to discuss issue that is of growing concern, the first time it happened, we laugh. Hey, okay. $650,000 went in the breach. We we'll do investigation. Granny and myself laughed. And my auntie me and my other family, like, oh, yeah, we laughed. The next time it happened, they put it on the chairman. The chairman had to justify himself and put the record out. Well, okay, let that go. We're just getting into it. Auntie, my man, I'm going to text the names to you. You call them and say, Stanton said he spoke to you. That true? And let it say, Stanton laugh. But to our audience, over 5,000 just joining us in less than an hour. To our audience, it is true. Go ahead, Andrew Mama. Let's hear I'm you. I'm not saying you are lying. I'm saying, do they, the people who gave you, sending the documents to, to you, and they are saying that they are paying us because we voted for Richard Kuhn. Now, I'm saying to you, do the, the, the voucher that they have, Anybody can have a voucher for any reason. But Stanton, I want to be very careful because politics is being played here. First of all, they came up first. You got Kolba came up and said that Joseph Baker wanted to remove uh, 
uh, uh, the speaker, and so he gave him 4,500. Today, the story has changed to something else. I'm not saying you are lying. I'm saying to them who bring the news with the voucher, are they really saying the truth, what a voucher was for, or if the voucher is true, what it is, what is a, what it has been assigned for? That my question to you. Now, let me tell you what I got to tell you. When I went to Falanti Kofa office on last week, Tuesday, we talked, and I think I said it on Spoon TV. He told me, he said, man, all my colleagues, they are telling me that, oh, the budget is the budget that. But I'm saying, I'm quoting him. He said, if this is the budget the president wants, and they cut my money down, I am willing to work with the president. I don't have no problem. I will manage. That was the words of Fanati Kofa. And I sat there and I told him, thank you. That's what they call leadership. I said, I was one of the very hard critics of you. But I can see that your leadership is taking uh, shape. And I can see what you're doing. I've been following you. So I want to say congratulations to you. And I told him, thank you. And I left. Now, if you get Koluma came out and said, the voucher is for, is for, is to remove the speaker. Today, the come out again is to do something else. In my mind, I think that you really, really tell us what the voucher is all about. Maybe we don't know. So can I ask you a question? Who should tell you? You as the father should tell you or CC should tell you? Tell you? They should tell you what the voucher is all about because it keeps changing. But I just told you, Andrew Mama, I, I just told you, I just said to you, Andrew Mama, that the Unity Party representative that I spoke to said the voucher was a thank you voucher for people to have furniture from JMA. They enabled them to furnish their offices. I just told you that. Anything else you can say past that maybe it's politics. But what Unity Party people said. Because Yeke voted for Richard Kuhn. So they had to include Yeke. So let's just move on. But anyway, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to bring in uh, Glennie, and we'll go to Mombe, Mr. Jackson, and I said, though. Glennie, welcome to the show. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. I want to be very, very cautious in what I'm going to say. Um, and I actually wrote my pointers down because I want to be politically correct. As alarming as this may sound, very alarming and despicable, it is important that the government of Liberia investigates this immediately because this is about the Minister of State. This involves the Minister of State for Presidential Affairs. So this is no joking matter. This is nothing else that they promised to do and haven't done. This needs to be investigated. I hope President Brooker has heard about it but this needs to be investigated. Now, I listened today to the interview with Yeke Koluba, and there were several lawmakers that was called, and those lawmakers that they asked were not lawmakers that voted for whom. Most, with the, most of the lawmakers they called, they agreed that yes, what Yeke is saying was correct. I must uh, 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 make mention of Musa ability who said he did not know where Yeke, unless I didn't hear him, he didn't know where Yeke took the voucher from. But with all of these things we're hearing, even Prince Toe, all of them, they asked them, they called them, are listening to it. It is important that this has to be investigated because there's, there should be no other reason why they should get $4,000 or $4,500. Elections are over. If you voted for me, fine. So, and, and then another thing, I think um, Dr. Bobla alluded asking, like, who's responsible for buying furniture? Is it the Minister of State? What, what else would this money be used for? So I think the government of Liberia needs to investigate this because this is very alarming. And this is something that is concerning to us for this new government has just started. Now, those will be my comments. So, uh, Glady, thank you. I spoke to Musa. When I received this information, I told Musa I was going to say it. So I'm not trying to say I spoke to him directly. Uh, Musa said, Stanton, I didn't receive a voucher. And we went deep into the conversation. So let me be on the record. He said, Stanton, 
I ran as a deputy speaker to Richard Kuhn. I didn't receive a voucher. And I said, I respect you, sir. But when you know me, when I ask other questions, I will hold back his answer. But let me say this to you. I like what you just said. We heard Prince too. I think that's his name. On the station you were talking about. We heard Richard Kuhn call the in. I will say this. Let's be fair. Prince Toe was one of those that distributed this voucher. He was one of those. And Richard Kuhn cannot say that this thing is not true. Let, let's let, as alleged, because Prince, Prince Toe, who I listened to this morning, he denied it. And he said he is going on record to deny this in his own words because the journalist Many. asked him. Blenny. If we come back and, it say, and we find out that you are a part of this, what will you say to the Liberian people? And he said, I am telling you, I know nothing about what Yeke is talking about. Blenny, let me say this <laughs> Allegedly. to you. Blenny, Blenny, stop. My sister, I'm begging you. This is a media institution that the whole world for, though, thank God for you. We are so happy and humble. But let's be real. If we cannot solve and fix this, this government... Honor President Waga that we all fought for would be a disaster because we want to cherry pick. I want to say this today, I will say it tomorrow. It will be a disaster if because we want to cherry pick. What are alleged? What is true? Whether they directly say it or say, oh, we didn't do it because we don't want to remove for Natiko far or the no, 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 no. It's true. The Office of the Ministry of State issue these virtual through JMAX. And Unity Party got to stand up and take responsibility and then speak to this issue. I was so pleased today when the call after work, seven after six, the call Sylvester Grispe to the Capitol building. He just left from the Capitol building on this issue. So our next conversation that we'll be bringing forth on the $111,000, I sent it to them. I can announce it. I sent it to the protem. I sent it to the speaker. I sent it to everybody in the executive marshal. And I said I was going to discuss it. That's the only way we can help our country and help Joseph Yuma Bwaka. So let's hear you, mommy. We hear your Uncle Sam and I said, then we can move on. Mommy. Every time new administration comes in, people try to test the resolve of the president, try to test the pulse of the president. And that's how I see it. We can talk about all the different things along the line, whether it's virtual or Coupon, but I want to speak to President Boakai. President Boakai, this situation and other situation we discuss is intended to test your pulse about your commitment to good governance. It happened with the case of Magil. Usually, they will use people close to the president and see his reaction. That your reaction will determine how the rest of the other people behave going forward. Right after the election, they, they used Magill. He got a house, or taking money from people to get appointed in government. You were all over the place. They took evidence to President Weah. He pushed it aside and turned his back. That action set the basis for the massive corruption and the destruction of governance you saw on our president we are. So President Baka, this is your test too. It's come to you. You have the opportunity to set the peace. But it's not only President Baka, it's even the lawmakers. Let who you have statement. And I myself spoke to somebody and the person confided in me that, oh yes, that's true. But it's not intended to remove speaker. Whether that person is saying the truth or not, but I trust the person that spoke to me. Why should lawmakers be doing that? So people in your district, why are we putting pressure on President Weah? 
start to put pressure on your lawmakers. Start to demand them to account and hold them to this standard that they shouldn't be doing this. Taking money from president, can put president under pressure. It should stop. Furniture. President Waka, you said, think Liberia, love Liberia, and together we can build Liberia. Why is furniture? We're talking about producing local furniture, empowering local manufacturers. Why don't they buy those furniture? I'm not talking about in this case, because this case is tinted with some form of corruption. Why don't we buy our furniture from local producers? If they get capacity issue, why don't we use the first 90 days to address that capacity issue around polishing and painting and designing with government investment that going forward in the next budget year, we'll be buying Labrador like made furniture and putting it in our offices. That's the practical, that's the living of think Liberia, love Liberia, and build Liberia. It is not JMAT. It's bad. We complain about gas slip. We're not into furniture coupon. Where else are we going? From gas coupon, we add adding furniture coupon. From furniture coupon, what else are we adding? Car. Car coupon. President Boakai, this is the moment for you to send a message to your people that it is not business as usual. Any action you take will determine going forward. Thank you, Brother Mombe. Thanks. Mr. Jackson. Yeah, well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys are doing well. Look, I'll be very frank with you guys tonight, okay? I, I have to play Ellis Chessman here. If you want to mess up your government, gloss over this. Every single government that I've been associated with and I've known over the last thing, it starts with something that the praise singers will try to like gloss over because of sheen business. If you guys do it, it will spoil your government. The budget that came the last time, and you all know it because we discussed it in the chat room, it was a fair budget. The next day, they just turn your narrative, they, your, pub, your public say, you start to do all the Nyama thing to make it seem like it was a good budget. Hmm? The other thing here, now come again. I told you before, the old people that are around, Joseph Boca, they've been doing the same thing a long time. They don't need to be around them. And y'all were like, Malani me. Y'all were saying, I'm going to tell you against me. I've been around this. The reason why people don't like me is because I say the truth. And when I say the truth, I stand by it because I will be vindicated. I'm vindicated on the budget. I'm vindicated now on Grace Bay because Grace Bay is doing business as usual. He's doing business as usual. That's all he knows how to run a government. And I'm not accusing him, but I know the fact that it came from the Ministry of State. And if it came from the Ministry of State, it was signed at the Ministry of State, he must take full responsibility. And all of you on the, on the, on the platform here, you don't back it, I beg you. You don't spoil your Google Swiss government at that king that Brun people have a lot of good way to your government. And you start to nitpick and cherry pick that my friend Stanton said, I want to respect the boss Stanton. People say, Why are you throwing that spoon there? Why are you doing that spoon that way? I want that spoon that way because Stanton, imperfect as he is, he's straightforward and honest when it comes to Liberia. Okay, he said it to me. And, and Stanton and I said, We talk all the time. We agree on a lot of stuff that we don't talk to you about that are very important. There are things that are very important. And there's one here. You all play with it, you all will spoil your government. Okay? This one here, empty mama, no due respect. With all due respect, they're not something they'll say, do no long investigation. The origin of it, eh? the origin of it that must be sniped off so it cannot happen again. That's all I have to say. But you all want to go carry it and play with it and make all kind of nice or, or nicety talk about it. It will spoil your government. Okay, the same way how we have in the, in the initial stages, and nobody in the CDC was strong enough to condemn it, and everything transmogrify, and he all the power today. You got to nip this thing in the bud. Right away. I said, I still money to do it, 
But the uptake of it, the up if you hear millions of dollars, the fact that the first two, three, four, five months he did it, it set the bad tune for the whole six years of the government. Country that is prosperous and we doing good things on all that money. I don't have many more years to go. And the way that you're starting now, it looks like I will not see a transparent country in my lifetime. If you don't take care of this, I feel sorry for you. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much, Mr. Jackson. So uh, Mr. Jackson, Jackson you, your internet system been tripping. Yeah, Mr. Jackson, can you check your internet? You 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 skip it right yeah. please. Uh Minister Do. Hey, today is skipping. I'm sorry. Tomorrow I will buy the internet. I'm so sorry. I will buy good internet tomorrow. Tomorrow I will buy good internet. Sorry. Yeah. I'll go to, yeah. to, let, to let, let's manage you. I'm you. sorry. I, I hold your foot. I live in the. No, that's okay. We'll manage you. You are supposed to go buy internet. You said that you are speaking to the woman in the in the parking lot and posting it. Okay. I'm mean, Minister Doe, please. Yeah. Uh, hi to everyone. It's nice to be back on Spoon Talk. I will start off by hoping someone can apologize to me for branding me a liar at this at that when i brought the issue of this 4500 and like i've all said propaganda can make people win an elections propaganda cannot continue to lead the government i will say another thing that is truth again the amount of money we're talking about that was dished from the ministry of ministry of state put me on record again is 775,000 United States dollars. Let me tell you, don't forget, the House has a leadership from the opposition. We are just from government. There are countless things we will know in government before even those in government today know. We got the intelligence of the other $20,500 that accompanied this 4,500 coupon, and we are investigating that. We have had good, good information concerning that. And I will tell you on the record, and don't forget, it was me who brought it up. And somebody was bringing me all of the names, though I usually don't, because the truth crushed to the ground will always rise. I can only say this to someone. It is okay that we defend our government, but who is going to believe themselves by saying the president is not aware of all of these things how much more things would the president not be aware of my people when people keep giving these excuses, it brings questions to many persons mind on who is actually leading this government the president is not aware of appointments the president is not aware of this the president is not aware of that the president is not aware of anything somebody should be thinking what message are you sending out to your supporters to Liberians that the president is not aware of any of these things yes you can defend but well, we've been into this game a little while we understand the drill it is embarrassing for the president who has called for an audit of the ministry of state just a few days later you have the biggest bribery scandal that have rocked a government at the highest level of government being perpetrated. And somebody wants to defend if it is real or not real. There is a tip around from Yeke Koluba. When the Lebanese mayor from J. Max confirmed that the good note carries his signature and that good note will be paid for by the Ministry of State. So we need to take a little back and see where we're going as a country. There is no manja wine that tinges the wind in no time. We have a country today where problems upon problems. I was just informed that pig feed is now three for 100, which was three for 50 just a few months ago. But we are in a country after several servants have not gotten paid across the board, where the Ministry of State is now giving money for something, either furniture, either food, either scratch card, either whatever it is. I think we should be embarrassed as a country and things need to be uncles. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, former Deputy Minister Ashley. Though, you know, this time we want to sit here and laugh and joke, but we have to be serious. Today is Monday. It's like a SmackDown Monday. We have to go all in with nothing but the best stories out there. Liberians people got to know what they can get from Spoon because, like I'm saying to you right now, my phone is going off, guys, that people thought Yeke was lying. I'm not going to say, well, the intent, but it is true that this 4,500 were given. Uh, if you said 31 individuals that voted for Richard Kuhn, it will be 139,500 others. If for uh, 34 voted for Richard Kuhn, it will be 153,000. But now the question remains, and you need to ask your lawmakers, and I would actually ask the speaker tomorrow, actually ask Minister of State Sylvester Grisby, who gonna pay for this? Like Donald said, like Dr. Bokla said, Dr. Richardson said, everybody else saying it. Who gonna pay for this? Who package is coming from? I mean, I, I wanna be very fair. I'm frustrated. When I wake up in the morning, I like to go on my cell phone and people say, oh, uh, Stanton or Spoon or CEO, I get something to you. Can you send me $10? If I have it, I send it to them. But to get this kind of information, around with this kind of information, the question people are asking, go back to the PPCC regulation dwelling. Was the regulation violated? You guys know about the, the PPCC, the high thing. If the government of Labra going to make this payment to JMA, I'm like, you read about PPCC, Dr. Bobla, you know, everybody, yeah? It's the government now violating the PPCC regulation that procurement process should have been followed. Where are we? Where is the $153,000 coming from? Sylvester Grisby packet? Or Sylvester Grisby get some money sitting there in your office that you can put the draw like this and take your money? Only thing I gave him a draw that turned out. But Sylvester Grisby got $153,000 in his draw? Do I want to talk to me before I go to Dr. Richardson? Are this just now violating all of the uh, 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 entity out there that's supposed to safeguard the government to prevent corruption? Do I The only thing I get in my office is a tissue. You might get 10 Ali doing well. But I, 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 will, I will say this, Tenton. Uh, let's make some correction. The last time my brother Doki Moore and said $500 was for the removal of the speaker. He never said it was for furniture. That was a lie. So let's get that record straight. But I will say this, though. Stanton. I will say what I said before, not to be repetitive, but this must be repeated. Honorable Buaka, you have to address this aggressively, very aggressively. Look, imagery is everything. If the perception of this administration comes out to be where the president does nothing about these kind of claims, it sends a powerful message out there. Mr. President, if the government is struggling, my question is, where's the money coming from? First of all, uh, if I remember, uh, Mimi, uh, I think it was like a couple of months ago, a few months ago, when Stanton showed my building, Mimi was like, hey, Dwally, you need some furniture? There are thousands of Liberians with furniture stores out there. Why aren't we patronizing them? What's going on? Why? Every single time somebody leaves the, the, the legislature, they take the furniture home. What are we doing to our people? Where is this money coming from? There is this claim that the government has no money. This is why I always tell people, when the government tells you it has no money, that is not true. The government has the capacity to generate money to put them in the right places so we can raise more revenue. If the government is giving $4,500, I want you to understand it. Kuro, kuro, yeah, listen to me. For the man on average, may one fifty dollars a month. $4,500, that almost five years for one body man pay there. That they want to get to the year, give it to them. It's going to send it to represent it. They may go buy, he bought 1,005 senator, the other 3,000 give it to you, print it, give it to Now, what are they both doing? If this is what is happening, Mr. President, now, I still have some reservation, though, Stanton. What up? This is, I don't want to believe this, but I'm not naive by the same token. The president must come up and address it, or the Ministry of Information has to come up and tell us something that the, the executive press secretary from the president's office has to speak about this. This cannot be left to go because. The message is sent, the perception of this government is going to be tinted and possibly permanently. Stanton. Also, just to add, we have invited the Minister of Information. Uh, he will be joining us Wednesday if all goes well. I uh, we, we 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 chatted. When I receive this kind of information, I go above and beyond. 
So Jerry Limit Pierre, I have confirmed with me that he will be on Spoon Talk on Wednesday to also address this situation. He has to investigate and be able to come up and say that which is right. Dr. Richardson, I'll wrap this composition up and we'll bring in our next composition for today. What say you, Doctor? Um, I'm going to repeat myself. And what I said earlier is that why are we paying people to do their job? It is their job to vote for Speaker of the House. And it is their job to vote one way is their rights to vote one way or the other. So why should somebody be giving them extra pay or extra favor for them to be able to, you know, get for, for voting for a particular person? So that's the first question that I have. The second question is, I think we agree they broke the law. Somebody said GSA was developed to, you know, process government uh, orders and, and, and requests. And definitely who's going to pay if PPC is not involved, if there was not a bidding process, you know, we just went and selected one store. What's in it for the store? What kind of conflict of interest do we have? What's going on with the relationship between the person who made the arrangement for the store to go pay all of those senators a uh, 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 furniture voucher? Who's getting what in the end? Because something got to be in it for somebody, and that's wrong. Lastly, I hope that the president holds somebody responsible. Somebody should be liable for this behavior because this is the kind of behavior that we're trying to get rid of in our country. We don't want corruption. That was the, the, something that we've been talking about all the time. So let the president stand up and say exactly what type of government that he wants. He does not want corruption. He got a whole smart response. We need to see action. We're tired of worse now, or at least I'm tired of it. Thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. Anybody want to add anything before we read it? 30 seconds. We got a lot on our plate. We just received another information. But the President of the Republic of Liberia has called a special session. Uh, he has written J. Fudanti Kofa, and we'll be reading that thereafter. Go ahead. Talk to me, Angie Mama, real quick. Unmute yourself. Unmute I yourself. I'll tell you what I say. I didn't say that the CEO is not saying what he know. I said on the platform, these people who bring in this information, we don't know whether it is a fact or not. That's what they're telling the CEO. Can they come to the world or to the public and say, yes, this is what they get all the 4,500 for. I'm not saying it's right. And I'm not saying that it happened because I have no information thereof. CEO put it, this, this stuff in the, chat, in the chat room. I'm not saying he lied, but I'm saying Let's take time. Let's get to know in details. First of all, you, you can call back in and say is to remove the speaker. He had a president name all over. Joseph M. Baka wanted to move, remove the speaker. He gave us this. That was the first lie. Then they went by, they came by again. It's for furniture. Tomorrow again, they'll come back again. They will say it's to carry somebody to the farm. So I'm saying, let's take time and see where the information is coming from. Let's dig to the bottom of it. I'm not backing Sylvester. If it is true that he did it, I'm with you on the platform that he should be investigated. But for me, I like to take time to hear from this point. They must come and make it public. Tell it. Secondly, I want to correct Mr. Doe. I said, so we got to move on real quick, Dan. Uh, at yeah, the real quick, yeah. I said, Doe can tell long. See, oh, you don't even stop him. But anyway, I said, Doe comes on the platform and try to make it look like it's clean. Stop putting your mouth into some back government. There will be some error we'll correct it. We'll not get to back anybody. Whether you're my nephew, you my auntie, will not back you. But I just like to be a little bit more cautious when I'm doing my stuff because CEO only can get information from everybody. He's a CEO. I'm not a CEO, so I got to take my time to get my own information. But you said a few days ago, a few months ago, PC was for what? Three pieces for $50. That's a blatant lie. Can we, can we we'll do this after? Andrew Mama will do the after. Andrew Mama will do it after. Oh, Andrew Mama, Andrew Mama, we got to go by that topic. Andrew Mama, I beg you, Mama. I beg you, please. Let's go by topic. Well, at the end of the day, we are here to ask. No, no, no. Andrew Mama, Andrew Mama, please. We're not, we're not the bro. I beg you. Yeah, yeah. I beg you, Mama. Yeah, I beg you, Mama. I beg you. I beg you, Auntie Mama. We'll, we'll come back to the big free conversation. I want to give everybody 10 seconds on this issue. We got to move to the next one. Glenny, real quick. 
So I, I also want to say, not to make light of this moment, but I also want to say it's important, like I said, the government needs to act now. If it means that they suspend Grispe and investigate this, this is best practice, they need to do that. But I listened to, to Representative Kulva. He of Yaga Kulva, he also said that all of us here getting paid by spoon that Stanton submitted a one million dollar budget. And I want to make it clear I am not getting paid. So that <laughs> part that Yaga Kulva said was not true. He said okay, that this morning. Thank you, Thank, you. Make, make of thank, you thank you for taking it out of your chest. And now yes, we move. Yes, okay. Thank you. So let me say this, though. Oh, Mr. Dr. Bubla, you want to add? Yes, please. I just I just want to I just want to footnote something. So in leadership, there are two kinds of authority. There's legal authority that comes with your office, and there's more authority that comes with your example. And people are paying attention. In the first 100, 150 days, it kind of sets the tune. So sometimes things seem to be small, but they're significant. It is important for the president to get a handle of his folks at Ryan. See, all the people working for him, Ryan, they were appointed. So sometimes you got to pay attention to things and you got to let people go. Not because it's totally a right or wrong issue, but it's not expedient because then it becomes dead weight. So it's so important because that perception can create the environment for this president to operate in. And I think he still has a great opportunity to be a great president, but you can gloss over small things because small things can be significant. Thank you very much, Dr. Bopla. Let's move on, guys. I beg you. We keep our personal stuff for the end of the show. We'll create another 30 minutes for us to attack each other. I want us to remain on the issue because we got a lot to discuss. You want to we got to discuss the cow. I'll come to you, Minister Doe. I will come to you. I'll come to you. We got to discuss the cow. We got to discuss the second Sylvester Grace pay, $111,000. Again, I will beg you, let, let's stop being personal for a second. Let's just go directly into the people's issue. I said, do you got 30 seconds? I got 30 seconds. Too. Okay, after Minister Do. Go yes, ahead. Well, yeah. yeah, thank you. I just wanted to uh, correct uh, something very quickly here. First off, uh, they are saying furniture coupon because JMAT is a furniture store. And so when you go to JMAT, what you can get from there is furniture coupon. It's furniture rather. So, but like I said, and that is true, 100% true. The intent of the $25,000 of which 4,500 was placed in coupon is to hold the block together for the sake of coming and ensuring Fonati Kofa does not go on as a speaker. Everyone can keep responding to Isaac Do. I don't respond to people. It's okay. But what I'm telling you, we we'll always come to the forefront to be true. Again, there is a 20,500 that accompanies the 4,500 coupon that we are talking about. And the intent is to hold the black together for the sake of removing from Antikofa. And they put it in the form of coupon. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, former Deputy Minister Isaac Do. Mommy, take us home on this conversation, please. For Antikofa has demonstrated exceptional leadership on his Facebook page. People need to follow it. You know, when he was contesting for the speakership, I said, yeah, we support him for that reason. While there is noise all around that the president wants to remove him, he posted his picture of he and President Boaka smiling. He sends a message to the naysayers and those who want to politicize an anti-corruption fight for political gains. This coupon issue, we should not use it for politics. We want to use it to address the issue of corruption in our country. And that's why we want to stick on. The action should be investigated. The motive should be investigated. And that if it turns out to be an attempt to bribe or bribery, the law should take a course. We want to push that. We don't want to bring it to a political fight because when you bring politics in, and then the interest of politics can overshadow the major issue of the fight against corruption. People who are even victims of that would take side 
because it affects their political interest. That's why we don't want to bring politics in this. And I think that the leadership for Nati demonstrated by putting a picture. So let's stick to the issue. The action is wrong. Lawmaker taking gas slip, they should not be taking furniture coupon. It's wrong. You should pay attention to that and investigate the factors driving it. Not to use Funati and politics to settle political school. It's wrong. Nobody wants to move Funati Kofa. Nobody pay money to move Funati Kofa. Funati Kofa is an integral part of the government. He's working with President Buaka to ensure the government moves forward. Actions of corruption should be investigated and people who are found culpable should be dealt with in accordance with the law. We should not bring politics to compromise the major fight against corruption. That's how we close on that. All right, so thank you very much, guys. We have to move on our second conversation for today. And to tell you the truth, I saw with you, uh, if you speak to Fulati Kofa, he all in working with the executive across the aisle to make sure Liberia be a better place. Now, if you have your own problem with Fulati Kofa, that's okay. You know, but when you speak to him, you understand his mindset a better Liberia. Let's move on. Folks, here is the bomb share for today. And this is big. And we got to be honest. Again, it's Sylvester Grisby. Again, it's Sylvester Grisby. We, we, we shouldn't take this for play. You know, it, it, it drives me nuts because we sacrifice our time, our resources, our talking and everything, our life, our businesses, everything. Do I really sleep last night? I'm going to post this for you to see for the very first time on Spoon, folks. The importance of having this conversation. One, yes, the document. I want you to read this document. Republic of Liberia, January 17, 2024. Mr. Duot Van Babus, Director General, National Social Security Corporation, 24th Street, Singapore, Morovia, Liberia. Dear Mr. Director General, who is writing this letter? Sylvester M. Grisby, Senior Advisor to the President-Elect, Office of the President-Elect. I want you to understand, it, at the time, President Buaka was never ever so in. So you still had George Minor where as outgoing president. But let's read the letter. We are facing very serious challenges with respect to logistics and transportation for the inaugural activities. Even after the inaugural, the Ministry of State will be in continual dire need for transportation. In view of the foregoing, we wish to request that you kindly of secure for us five SUV, one, two, three, four, five, five SUV for the use of VIP guests attending the inauguration and thereafter to help ease the transport need of the Ministry of State. The vehicles will be given duty-free clearance. Thank you for your usual kind support and assistance can regard sincerely yours, Sylvester M. Grisby. This is a letter that was written January 17, 2024, under the office of the president elect. Before I bring in the rest of the document, I will put this down to hear your own side of what you just make of this request. Dr. Francine Chinua Richardson. What you make of this? Um, it sounds like big shot syndrome is coming into play. I can pick up the phone and just call anybody because I'm XYZ to say I want cars. I need cars. I believe that there are procedures that this government has to follow. And what I'm seeing is people are not following the procedures. What, what gives Mr. Grisby the right to order cars for the Ministry of, of, of State? Is he the one supposed to be doing that? Is, this a, is that a process that he's supposed to go through? Or is it because he's a big shot, as we call it in our country? 
So, I mean, again, we cannot let these things continue. They shouldn't fester because when it festers, uh, you know, it's a breakdown in the government system. It's a breakdown in the government system. It, it, eventually, everybody be doing their own thing. And again, as everybody said here today, we need to hear from the president. He needs to stand up. He needs to get his act together. He needs to start calling these people to book. That's that's what I have to say. Thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. Mr. Dwalu, your take on this letter, we will run with the rest of the story. But what you just read, Mr. Dwalu, talk to us, sir. Um, I'm actually reading this book. It's called How to Think Politically by these two guys out of Britain called Jeremiah Murphy. And, and one, one thing they discuss in the book, every time an organization, such as government, when they veer away from the institutional process, there is a tendency for the rule of law to break down. Why would Mr. Grace be requesting vehicle when there's a sitting government that can be utilized to usher in or ferry people back and forth? Why is he requesting vehicle? What is the justification for that? Is this a separate entity from the sitting government? The government, it is the government. The government is not President Weah's government. It is not Honorable Barakai's government. It is the people's government. It's the people's establishment. Why is he requesting it? There is no justification of any kind to request government. There is GSA. Look, every time we veer away from the institutions of government, this is what you see. Where people believe, like Dr. Franklin said, the big man syndrome, they believe now I have a position, I have to make my mark, I would take money from government. When every single time we complain the government does not have money, this is what we do. On President, we are President, we are convoy. And I'm not exaggerating, I was in the country. There was no time that President We Are Convoy drove by without at least 20 vehicles. I repeat, there was no time in the Republic of Liberia that President We Are Convoy drove by without 20 vehicles. You won't tell me out of those 20 vehicles, you can use five of them to go ahead and take dignitaries back and forth. What are we doing to us? Senator Man, uh, sometimes I can't talk these things. Is it Dwadu or Army Man? Thank you very much, Dwadu. A lot of questions coming up. A lot. And also, Joseph Walker was it president at the time. He was president elect. Folks, help us understand. At the time, Sylvester Graceway has the authority to request for vehicle five SUV. And before you come in, Glenny, we gotta put we gotta put the document up. How much we are talking about, folks? How much we are talking about? Not the reply. We'll get to the reply. I want you to zoom in. We are talking about 111,000 United States dollars. 111,000 United States dollars. Cut us Motor A. Take a picture, zoom in. Where is those vehicles today? Those five vehicles. Ask yourself, where are they today? Glenny, talk to us. It gets interesting. Senator, if everything we're talking about and everything we're hearing is Sylvester Grisman's name is the one that's on top, suspend him, investigate, close the case. That's just it. Everything we're talking about, if he is the one that's the center, the nucleus of the problem, we need to take care of the nucleus and investigate. We should also be able to call him and ask him questions. Or call the the, the 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 press secretary and ask. I know that Pierre is um has, has said that he will come, but these things don't look good. It's they really, really don't look good. And we can talk from now until judgment day. But if we're here and we keep hearing, and this is the thing people are saying, you can react to every story, but it is important that people get the right perception out there about the government. And not hear all these stories and say, oh, that, that this one, I see this, or that this other one. No. If these things are, are investigated thoroughly and properly, it will also, the next story that comes out, they will be careful because they know they're going to investigate it. We can't keep quiet on it, but it has to be investigated. Another story will come out tomorrow again. We can't, the government cannot just let these things slide and say, oh, I just started to bring you up. It's important that it, because citizens voted for this government and they want the better, they want to see that these, this government comes and, and, and meets up with their promises as they made. 
So we can just hear these things and say, oh, Luther Tapper was still waiting for his into his 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 report. The uh, uh, inauguration was still waiting. Yeah, Grace Benaka again. No, they need to investigate these things. It's important that they do that. There's some some people who work in the government who has who are very credible. And I will hope that even the Senate, I know Fanatico, like you said, has now called him to a meeting. The senators need to get involved too and start asking questions. Take it to them. Thank you very much, Glendy. Thank you. Dr. Bopla, before we go to uh, Auntie Mama, Dr. Bopla, the letter is very clear, but the date, the intent of the request, Dr. Bopla, you are asking, you have a JPTT team now. Let's put, set that out first. You had a JPTT team that could have spoken to the George Manor We Are team and said, these are the things we need and we think we can get money from National Social Security. But all that was bypassed. Operation Grace Pay Five Vehicles came into play. If you look at the document that the book read, which of course you do, $111,000 talking about tax exempt of 53 thousand united senators talk to me dr booklet thank you cecile so um during taylor administration he was making a trip and at the airport you know one of his officials said mr president here is mr fleming fleming was the social security director at the time yeah it's the hiding from you what he was saying is that the man agency got money so let me answer the question here why is is he going directly to social security because social security is one of the few government agencies that has no liquidity issues they have money and the reason they have money is because they collect our retirement and pension money it is so wrong because social security invests that money in an economy that is semi-depressed so the returns are marginal. Teachers work for 40 years and their retirement money is so small. You go to that agency because he knows they have money and they can get five figures on quick on in uh, you know, a short order. But why don't you ask for money to buy motorbikes so the DEOs and, and in the in the in the counties can go to the schools in the rural area? We constantly see this attitude, this strength, this behavior, where the government is God and the people really don't matter. This president got to arrest this quickly because it keeps happening. That's why he went to, to, to Social Security. I would be interested in finding out what Mr. Van Bommel's response was because nobody should write to our pension um, and retirement organization ask for anything. It should be forbidden. And the man in charge should say, sorry, we that's not what we do yet. We can't give you five cars. We're protecting the nation retirement money. Remember, that's income security for people who work hard for small money. And when the time comes, they need to get a little fast and ten cent. So all of these things are just pointing to one thing. The president needs to have a come to Jesus conversation with his key people and set some things straight so that we don't keep dealing with these stories like the CEO was at the beginning. When you woke up in the morning, you want to get something, please give me five cents. Yeah, all right. But these kind of stories that has the propensity to create all kinds of national concerns, we shouldn't be dealing with them. This is wrong to ask for five vehicles. You can borrow a car for people to ride for that one day. We're suffering in this place, and you can't keep misusing the privilege you have, and ordinary people can't get anything, but you can just grab stuff for these non-productive activity. Nobody will remember what kind of cars ply the streets here on inauguration day. What we will remember that we inaugurated a president and named Joseph Burger. So we got to change our behavior as leaders and be more responsible. Thank you very much, Dr. Bobler. Thank you. Uh, Minister Woodrow Cody, uh, again, I can say to everyone on this show, the whereabouts of those vehicles stay in question. National Social Security, I spoke to the one from, from Bobler. Sorry, his last day is kind of too hard to pronounce here. But I spoke to him. I spoke to him today. I called him. I asked him. And I will tell you exactly what he said because 
Dr. Bopla, you asked him whether we should call him. I did. I called him. I always try to investigate this thing before Wait, we no, bring it. Bought? Did it bother yes. you? Okay. Yes. Okay. But where are the Vigos? Where are the Vigos? It was bought. And we have identified where, where two of the vehicles are right now. Okay? The Vigo is now a GSA. Can you this is a huge thing for our country. And this is big that we cannot defend anymore. Because our country is in a place that you, the office, we say how John Manor we are. As president, you had the JPTT thing. You bypass all of that to go ask for money. When I spoke to one of the senators, they said, oh, maybe that's the reason why uh, Sylvester Grisby is threatening to keep the word at the National Social Security because of all these different things. And that's not the only document, though. We have three other documents that will be shocking to the nation. Let's hear from Angie Mama. Yes. Like I said again, I will never back corruption, neither will I back wrongdoing of anybody. I will not back my own son, like you have always said. So I'm not going to back anybody. Every top will stand on its own bottom. But when I don't have sufficient information, I have to take it easy and have make statement on the very huge platform. I want to say to y'all, y'all remember during the election, President Joseph Human Parker during the inauguration. It was so tense. He didn't have vehicle. The very acid door and the entire gang of government stole all the cars and hid it in the bushes, took out the tires and put them on the rocks and covered them. The government could not find a vehicle. And they were so jittery. They were so, I mean, it was so, uh, 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 it was so bad to the point where the person had to take it, the telephone and call Mary Bro and said, Mary Bro said it on the platform and said, Mary, can you please help me? We don't even have vehicle for our guests. And Mary Bro said, okay, Mr. President, and she announced on the very platform, Spoon TV, that she had to help the president to get a few cars to add it to what he had to for the guests that were coming for the inauguration. CDC government, I'm not saying what Grace did. If he did it, it is wrong to just order for vehicle without the president knowing about it. They can investigate that. Grace Payne, I'm a son, and he's not a baby. So he can stand for himself. But I want to say on the platform that it was so bad when CDC government hit all the cars up to now. They're still looking for the cars. They got them hitting on the bushes, on the farm, everywhere. So the person had to, uh, he had to ask Mary Pro for help. And she came in and she helped. The records are there. So if a graceful order the cars, from social security we're all informing his boss it is wrong but i'm saying maybe that what prompted him to do that but i'm not a lawyer for grace so i just want to make that point they refuse all they refuse to be audited they refuse to get the cars back and the team were refusing to work with just all human back guy the president of the liberia uh, uh uh team so let's face it let's say what is wrong i said okay can sit here and just make big off. And be talking all kind of things against the government. No, we are. Angie Mama, Angie Mama, Angie Mama, Angie Mama, Angie Mama, Angie Mama, Angie Mama. Please let's focus on the topic, not on an individual. Angie Mama, Angie Mama. We let her try to control the conversation, not to be personal. Let's focus on this government, on this government official, and have a good conversation. We should stop calling the names of individual one of our panelists and stop attacking. Then we we'll lose focus. The librarian people want the best all of the network. I beg in you, please. All right, let me bring in Mame. Stanton, let's unpack something here quickly. Please. On the letter. Yes, sir. Should I pull it back up? I mean, you are you ready already? All right. One thing in the letter. Mr. Grisby is making the argument about shortage of vehicle. November 2023, the Korean government donated 10 brand new vehicles to the government of Liberia. The JPTT was established. 
I received a report from the turnover of Hugo to the GSA. That whole meal bro story, it's a fake story. I received a report over 76, 76, let me not say over, 76 vehicles were turned over to the GSA. I can go down, name it, Ministry of Commerce 4, Ministry of Finance Development Planning 5, Ministry of Labor 2, Ministry of Transport, EPA, NOCA 1, Safra Gray, yes, to a credit, she turned over her vehicle. The list goes on. 76 were turned over to the GSA. That beat CDC on different things. Vehicles were there that they could use. You can't use that scapegoat. We know other people hear their vehicles. We know other people are hiding their vehicles. We know other people store vehicles that they're trying to retrieve. But there were vehicles that could be used. But they decided to leave it and follow a process of taking money from NASCO. So I just wanted to make that clear in Jomoma. Vehicles were available. Ten new vehicles were donated. Government submitted over 76 vehicles to GSA. <coughs> there were means to acquire vehicles. Mary Brown was already renting vehicles, so she rented vehicles. She justified why she rented vehicles. So why you be renting vehicles at the same time buying vehicles, at the same time vehicles are available, and still making the argument that there were no vehicles. So you rent, you bought, vehicle available and you still making argument that there is no vehicle and NASCAR should give you money. That's wrong. Here is NASCAR's story. From Bamos and NASCAR has always been in this business of inside trading and double dealing with the opposition and the government. That has been the track record. Doing presidential leave 12 years. Oh, I knew about I mean, the last quarter or eight. From Bamos were giving money to the CDC and George Weir. He was financing medical bills for George Weir. George Weir had people going to hospital. From Bamos were paying for that, both locally and internationally. I will not call names. Some of them are my friends. They needed medical relief. No problem. I just wanted to put that out. He was paying medical bills, foreign travel medical, local medicals. That's what he was doing. And that's the reason why he keep maintaining his position. The action of gross insubordination at NASCAR, when, when, the, when, the, when the deputy was dismissed, I posted. I said, why only the deputy and not the head? The both of them were wrong. Now you see the reason why only the deputy was dismissed for gross insubordination, but the head were not tempered with. Because the head had already been engaged into business with Great Speed. It's wrong. President Boaka, again, we want to say this to you. We want to say this to you. You have an opportunity, a clean slate, to lay an unprecedented record of governance in our country. You old man, you don't have anything extra to prove to anybody. The only thing you need to do is to leave a legacy of good governance. To take children from the, from the flows and put them on chair. And go to the hospital and improve it. Give people hope. Don't allow anybody to destroy your reputation. Don't allow anybody to put you under pressure. We're saying this because we want to believe you are not aware and part of what is happening. But your action when these things come up, will tell us where you stand on them. Why are you running to NASCAR? Social security people, pension benefit, cannot get their pension on time. But you're using money to buy government vehicles for people. Today, I will conclude on this. I saw GSA on the street retrieving vehicles. And we're all in the news. That's good. Congratulations to our friends there. But those are all vehicles. Yeah, it's six brand new vehicles that not even made six months. Go retrieve them. Put them on your list of vehicles you should retrieve. They should be retrieved and brought under the government and put on the GSA. Central body with government money. So in the next two, three days, let's see whether the GSA can muster the courage and arrest those vehicles. Then we will know whether they're ready to arrest the old vehicles from the CDC people. 
can be business as usual. That would be my comment, my initial comment on this issue. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mame. Let me bring in Dr. Bobla. Have you spoken? Go ahead, Dr. Bobla, please. Thank you. So, so my friend Mame is always very articulate, on point, and he raises the issue well. I do disagree, though, that it's not okay if the Social Security pay people medical bills and stuff. You know, we have the all this big conversation I have about tenure position. What we need to do is add code of conduct to the tenured people. Social Security, my aunt just celebrated her 90th birthday, Mr. CEO, and she worked for 44 years as a teacher in Liberia. She retired and to get her small money, her daughter got to bring paper, she got to sign this, you got to notarize that to get her small money after 44 years. One person can just write a letter and get five vehicles from the from the, from the um, uh, National Security uh, and Welfare Corporation. It is absolutely wrong. There has to be a code of conduct. And again, I stress, this is our pension retirement agency. They should not be funding government operations like that. They have a trust. They have to manage their money well. These things must stop. And the president got to get a handle on these matters so that he can have an opportunity to be the legacy leader that I believe he can be. If these things linger, if they fester, we'll have all kinds of problems in this country. Who was the Ivo? I think. So I, I, think I, 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 I think I can go ahead. I think, I'm a, was it? Yeah, let me tell you. 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 Yeah. All right. Oh, thank you very much. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, when the show is going on, some conversation will be coming in. You'll be looking at your phone and you know where you are. But again, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Boplet. Let me bring in Uncle Sam Jackson, as it do. And welcome to the show, Alpha Tuba. Uh, Mr. Jackson, go ahead, sir. Look, I bet you any money, Mr. Boca, President Boca will take no action. When I dating here, it will be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks. Sylvester Brisbane will still be in our mansion there. No action will be taken. If it is, it will tell me that Joe Boca is serious about rescue train. This is for me. The budget was my first test. If they revise the budget and it have some more in Ports, and they make it a credible budget aligned to, to, to some development plan. That my, my second test is that the fact that on January 17, I don't hear the guy, the fact that Sylvester Grisby could write a letter, and I'm not a lawyer, but if you don't have authority and you're using something, it looks on the surface like a breaking of the law. So somebody got to pay for that. And let me see a week from now, a month from now, this will be to see whether Joseph Boca is serious about not business as usual. That's all I have to say. As it though. As a dog, please. Yeah, thank you. So uh, uh, I want to make, one, yeah, I, I want to make one promise on this show. Um, uh, Auntie Jamama, you are my mother. You are my auntie. One promise I can make to you is that I will always respect you, no matter what you say to me. I will always see you as my auntie, no matter what. Trust me, I will never, ever respond to you anyway, and I will always be your son. The only thing I want to beg is, instead of always responding to me, let's discuss the issue. I'm one of the least Liberia. You don't have to respond to me. If I say something and you know it's not true, come to what I say. 
with the truth. You don't have to always respond to me, referring to me. It's not going to help your cause. Trust me, it's not even going to help President Barkai. Because the more you respond to me, I don't respond to you. I'll always say a different thing, and you will always be behind me. So as my auntie that I love so much, that I respect, and I will always respect as my mother, let's discuss the issue for Liberia. So, you know, may my, my may, I always call you my mommy, my may say something that I wanted to say, and you you said it right. Um, you know, people were wondering, uh, after the episode that happened at uh, NASCAR, why would the president dismiss the deputy who was implementing instructions from her boss, but the boss whose instructions she was implementing is still there? You don't have to go no further to know why everything happened will happen. But let's walk a little time back. That's what I've always asked and wondered. What exactly does res res rescue want? Today is one thing good. The same thing good today, tomorrow, may not be just acceptable. I'm sure we can remember a few days ago, just a few days ago, we had the political advisor to the president, Madame uh, Mandela Cooper, right on this very same spoon show. And she made a revelation that at the time President Boykai was president elect, he gave her an instruction to order materials for the VIP center, amen. For the VIP center, for the VIP center um, at the port. And I asked her who gave her that authority. She said she had virtual, we have not seen it. Today, as president elect, vehicles were being ordered. Oh, my internet. Uh, hello? We, we can hear you, I said, go ahead. We hear you. Go ahead, I said, we can hear you. Yeah, it shows the deep state of our country. Of our country. Where it seems to be that we have two presidents. One president, George, we are very cool, man, calm, easy, don't have problem with anyone. We respect anybody, respect the president. Breaker as vice president opposition, gave him access to VIP, gave him everything he wanted. And the president elect who was then issuing orders for people to buy things, for VIP lunch, for people to buy cars. Who knows how many more things again we come to know? And these things are concerning. In as much as sometimes we get tired because the problem is so much, it is so crazy in the time we are. One who have expected of a government, the years, who come back and do something better. But again, we know the history of the United Party during the 12 years rule. So all of these were predicted, we said of it, and they will all come true. Thank you very much, Asado. Let's bring in Ava Toba. Ava, welcome to the show. Oh, let me get up mute. <laughs> oh, I'm not on mute. Thank you. Um, I just think it's worrisome. You know, I'm starting to wonder whether well, this is a rescue train or a miscue train. It, is this government who just gonna be here in situation of mistakes or actions that don't conform with good, good governance and all that kind of stuff. So for me, I will be interested in knowing um, how can he before January 22nd, with the committee in place to handle the inauguration of all the transportation issues, be in a position to request these vehicles from you know, a government entity. And then the response, I believe the two letters were the same date, the 17th. So the immediate request to the bank or whoever to provide that guarantee. And then, like you said, the vehicles were actually received. So I see NASCAR handing the people's money 
and at the same time being like an investment vehicle because i believe nascar got multiple investments across the country and those investments are supposed to be returning something some return on that investment because it's the people's money they expect it to be there when they need it and it should not be like my man <laughs> Dr. Propless aunt who crying for money and maybe many other people. But it's it's funny because I was in a conversation this weekend where some people actually receive their, 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 their retirement checks like on time, consistently. But then there are set of other people that complain. So how can there be some level of discrimination to the system? I don't understand. I don't know when the last time NASCAR were audited, but this kind of stuff, I don't believe is in their mandate. And if it is, it shouldn't be where people at the highest level of government can just request, you know, funding from this kind of agency that's supposed to be protecting the people's resources and they willingly give it out. So I think it should be something that should be looked at closely. I don't think we should speculate um, because this is something that could affect a significant number of people if they get upset about what's going on. The fact that they cannot get the regular checks but some kind of big shark in their send letter and get money. So to avoid some of these complications, I think the president also needs to weigh in for us to know where he is on these issues. There have been so many mistakes and a refrain with here is the president didn't know. So the president needs to come out and say, what does he know and what he doesn't know about these things and take either the responsibility and take action or not take the responsibility, blame it on the individual's concern, and then take action. So a lot of this is administrative right now. Thank you very much, Abato, but thank God that you, I believe you're home now, right? Because you went for that funeral and you, you, you home, yes, right? Yes, I'm back home. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, we want to say to everyone, because it's a serious time in our country. And listen, you can get mad at me, no problem. I'm here to serve Liberia, serve the Liberian people. And everything I do to the end, I will always love Liberia, think Liberia, and build Liberia. This is what I do appreciate. But let's go back to the letter, to every one of your points. I love to also go to the date of October, January 17, 2024. Jose Yuma Buaga was elected president, or you say president elect. You still have George Bonner, we are there. If they were to request a vehicle at the time, it should be through the JPTT, that team. Not the advisor to the president-elect. Sylvester Grisby at the time, he wasn't a minister of state. He was just an advisor to the president-elect. I want Liberians to understand. It was the margin in of massive corruption. As we talk about asset recovery, should we begin at the executive mansion? Oh yeah, people are gonna get mad at me though. It was the marshal in of the same form of corruption that we fought against and put everything up former president we had and say he must go. We have Samuel Jackson attacking us, we attack President We are. CDC attacking, we attack President We are. They attacked me, I attacked Simon Twain. I will attack uh, Joe's, I will attack them all. What are we looking at here? So Vester Grisby as a vassal to the president elect has no authority. That ministry was under president at the time, George Manawea. Not just a Yuma Buaka. If you want to go through the JPTT, then you have an argument. Five SUV. So where are those vehicles? Where are they today? Somebody somewhere asking and said, but where, 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 where can we find them? I want to keep that part of the story for the more. We have identified three of the individuals that are driving those vehicles, three. One of them, they are related to Sylvester Grisby. Then my brother, my good friend, if I go and say that balancing puppy out of my mouth. I was checking to see no, if no, there. No, 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 no. The only thing I'm drinking that water, you know, I don't drink one. One of them. 
and the, the plate on that vehicle carry a special name. And the person working in this government. You know, when we receive the story, we love to do our own investigation because I don't want somebody to stand on making up story. The days for me to make a story, I will make a story on George Banner Weir, but I will never make a story on this government because I fought so hard to bring President Barker to power. But this is true. So if you look at the date, and you look at the time, and you look at, so I call the word today. Then you ask me if I call him. Stop texting me. I did, I call him. <laughs> He's a good guy. I I how, he, how he signed the letter? Did you ask him how he was about to sign it? Okay, so let's go ahead. Like let, let, let's go. This, is, this is the word letter. This is his letter, as you can see. All right? That's his reply to Sylvester, and we'll put the other document out, and he sent this to Joseph Amin. And I want you guys to read it, or I can read it if it's not too clear. Anybody can read it, we appreciate. Those are on the radio line. We want them to. Can somebody read it if I am yeah, correct? I don't. I don't know how I can read it. Go ahead, sir, please. Mr. Joseph Anin, General Manager, SIB Liberia, LTD, Broad Street, Monrovia, Liberia. RE regarding. Request issuance of payment guarantees to Sika Motors on behalf of NASCO. Dear Mr. Anin, I extend my warm compliments and best wishes for the new year. Based on a request from the transitional team for assistance to facilitate logistics arrangements during the upcoming inauguration program, NASCO has agreed and arranged to purchase a land cruiser vehicle from Sika motors with a deferred payment of 30 to 45 days. Example, March 15, 2024. SICA is requiring that we secure and provide them a payment guarantee from our bankers in order to be able to effect the sale of the vehicle to NASCO on such basis. NASCO, therefore, would like to request SIB to proceed to issue the requisite payment guarantee on our behalf to SICA Moto for the amount of 117,000 United States dollars to be paid by March 15, 2024. Copy of the invoice for the Toyota Land Cruiser 300 LC300 provided by Sika Motors is herewith attached. Your urgent attention given the short time period before the inauguration on Monday is appreciated with assurance of my highest esteem respectfully Dewey Von Bamos, Director General. So your question, Sister Glennie, yes, indeed, he signed it. Now the amount is 117,000. But to my dear brother, in whom I am not well pleased tonight, can you please slow the other? You see the way in which the world wrote the first paragraph? He said the transitional team. Did the request come from the transitional team? Alba Toba, please help us. It's, it's, it's possible because there is there was the inauguration team and then there was a transitional team. So if Grace Bay was a part of that transitional team, then maybe it did come from the transitional team. So we can look at Grace Bay letter again and see whether so, so, he said so, so, yeah, but, yeah, but it doesn't say that though. It, it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't it's say not Abba, yeah. it's not possible because it's not coming from the transition team. Yes, Who are the head of the that. transition team? You have Samuel Kofi Woos, you have Amara Conan, Amara uh, Mami. Those were the people you have Amos Twe. Those were the people heading the transition team. Grizzly was not on no transition I mean, team. Grizzly was not on the transition team. Grizzly was in America. They tried to make him the head, the coding, so they made Kofi Woods out in his place because we were trying to find transportation to bring Grizzly down. What did Mamamu say to you, Center? So what did I'm going to come back. And you probably love to get to the end of the story. And it don't make the story interesting. <laughs> Let's go through chapters. <laughs> yes, man. Center, you're right. The letter says from the office of the president elect. So you're right. Thank you. So so let's move ahead. Yes, the invoice to talk about. Yes, the other document, as you can see. Now, I call the way. 
And I asked him, what's going on with this? This morning we spoke. And he said, yes. Graceway at the time sent the letter, as you can see. I shared this document with him. I shared with him and I called him. And he said, yes. Graceway sent this document. I said, did you purchase the vehicle? He said, yes. I said, where are the vehicles today? He said, well, it's with the executive mansion of Minister of State. I asked him, I said, are you sure? He said, well, listen, we purchase it. Graceway has them. Wherever they are, I know it's with the Minister of State. Then I asked him, I said, is this legal? I told you I was going to talk on this, so I'm not talking behind him. I asked him, I said, is this legal? He said, as far as I'm concerned, it is. I said, who was the president at the time? Then the one called himself. He said, oh, yeah, it's the 17. I said, Joe, where was still the president? Why would Grace Bay write to your entity asking for five vehicles? And the rest of our conversation, I can't go into it. But that's your answer, Glendy. But how is it legal? Is he GSA? He realized, no, he, no, he, he realized, no, he realized when I, when I pointed the date to him, he called himself, he said, oh, no. Because let me say this to you. It's not legal. Oh, you cannot God. justify it. You cannot spin yes. it. It's wrong beyond measure. Because what happened here is a walk into corruption that we are facing with today about 4,500 others. Mm. Who all know about this transaction? Ostenta, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. I see two invoices with identical amounts. One for three cars at thirty-nine thousand apiece, and the other one for one car for one hundred seventeen thousand. Are those really different amounts, or they were using the three cars to buy the one car, or what? The total cars involved is five. The information I received, I, I, I read what you are seeing on those on those invoices. The total cars I were bought, there are five vehicles, uh, SUV. Uh, I shared this with some folks that I cannot call their name. They confirmed that the word said the right thing. He bought five vehicles. So if you see one for three and one for two or one for one, uh, as you see, the, what was requested was 117,000 United States dollars on the document. Oh, wow. Yeah. So whether it was for one or whether it was for that, all five, but the document can show to you. Now, like I said before, I sent this document to the speaker, to the protem, to other senators and lawmakers that they should investigate this because it's a high rise form of corruption. Now, where are those vehicles? I want you to join us again tomorrow. We will tell you where those vehicles are. They are not at the executive mansion. We'll tell you who using those vehicles. We'll tell you as to why and whether the president knew about this transaction. You know, during the transition, a lot of bad stuff happened, folks. People circle themselves around the president, use the president's name. I'm not defending Joseph Waka. And I think it's about time that the president speak and frown upon this that of the plan. They circle around him, use his name, and did what he wanted to do. And that's what we are faced with today. That's exactly what we are faced with today. What we have gathered from the NASCAR National Social Security. And I begin to share this information. Labro will be to its worst place ever in the history of Africa. Don't forget, CDC just walked out of office. They still have the men and the women that are willing to provide information because they were beaten. But it's good for our society. Transparency is good. So then let's do the round table very quick and we're gonna to get to look out the Jacob I call it issue. And then the information we show us about NSA. Why did they stop the audit? The question about NSA and 60 million United States dollars. Oh no, this one gonna hit you so hard. The question about NSA and 60 million United States dollars, you will want to hear this. So on this thing, I want to hear your closing argument on this Grace Bay and his five vehicle issue. One wish he gave somebody that related to him. One of the vehicle was given to Grace Bay, personal person. I'm not going to call her name. Her name start with N. I'm not going to call the name. I would just call the first initial. Then we'll do the rest of this story tomorrow. And you can push me to talk on this one. This is crazy. I'm going to go for all the M then. Yeah. Go to the executive <laughs> master. Go to the executive <laughs> master and look for all the M. You will get your answer. 
I gave you location and I gave you the first initial. So, Mommy, let me hear you 30 seconds to you that uh, uh, Bro Player, Andrew Mama, Sam Jackson, Glennie, as you do, Alba Tuba, and Dr. Richardson, then we'll go talk about the car. Mommy? If the General yeah. Services Agency wants us to believe they are ready to retrieve stolen vehicles or vehicles that were stolen during the George Weah administration, they should include tomorrow the retrieval of these vehicles. Publicly, they should announce it. The facts are available, the pieces of evidence available. They should announce an action to retrieve it. If they can announce an action to retrieve it, in the next two days, we want to see pictures that like the same way we saw them stopping vehicles of people from the George Weah administration on the street today. We want to see them retrieving those vehicles and taking them to the compound of the GSA and telling the Labrain people they have retrieved those vehicles. It will send a signal that they are ready. To commit crime is bad. But what is even worse if the crime is committed and you are aware and can't take action? So that's why I will say to them, I will not get to the asset recovery team yet. I will get to the GSA and they the one into full force at the moment. Go and retrieve those vehicles, wherever they are. Whether with anybody name starting with M or O or A, go and retrieve it and prove to us that you're ready to start business as usual. To President Boakai. President Boakai, we know how people can use the name of presidents. We know that. But the only way you can show to the world that people are using your name wrongly or people are using your name for bad deeds that you're not aware of is when these things come up, you take action. If you don't take action, you send two messages. That you are complicit in the act or you can do it. The other message is sent with the most damaging message. It informs all the other people that they can do the same thing and they will go scot free. The boy is in your coat, Mr. President. Thank you. Is Crispin working in the interest of the Liberian people? Or in whose interest does he work? I can spend 30, 30 seconds. Real quick, they only 10 because I gotta run through. It is speculated that Grispe wants to make a case on why he did not support Boakai. He wants to give a justification why he didn't support Boakai and support the other candidates. Indirectly, we're all speaking to the Liberian people. And that 2029, they can use all these things as example to say Grispe was right for not supporting Boakai. And, and all I know, let me, let me add right there. Real quick, this is what happened today at the executive mansion. They had a very, 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 very hard profile meeting at the executive mansion. And Grace Pitt told all the advisors, national security advisor, legal advisor, political advisor, all of them, that nobody see the president except they come through me. Today, and that meeting ended in confusion. Ask anybody that worked at the mansion. He said, you guys need to come through me to see the president. When you speak on this thing in your 30 second, he said, I saw a vassal to the president, must you go through the minister of state? It's just a side by question. And when I speak to people around, they say, but in whose interest this guy work? Is he working in the interest of the Labyrinth people with all this trouble? Appointments, nominations, go out there. Three people took their appointment to LEC. Money captain said he cannot yet from anybody, he cannot see the document except Grace will tell him to. And the names are on you that love executive mansion, Glenny. The name are there, they get the letter. Money captain said he can't pick it up. But we'll have that conversation later. That to both play your 30 seconds. Let's run with this thing and we can bring in the car. I finished finding the M. Oh. That business, people. <laughs>
<laughs> Good out here, Dr. Kofi. <laughs> we got our, we got our smart investigator here on the show. I will share with you, Doc, and Sister Mama, and Dr. Mama. Thank you. Thank we'll you. Keep you on it with me, sir. Uh, I'm coming in the end. You know, Sister, it will me. Thank it you. Was I agree. Agree. you. Find you. Find you find out, and I, ca I, catch, I catch you right now on the show tonight. If you send me that name, it's all right. I'll catch up you. How much? Okay. I, I'll catch you $100 right now. Well, I need $100 one more. I'll make, it, I'll make it 50. I'll make it 50. Go ahead, Doctor. All right, so look, um, on this matter, I, I agree with my friend Mame that um, GSA need to go and get the cars. But here's what I want to add. We need a code of conduct for the Nas uh, National Social Security and Welfare Court. This is so strategic and critical an entity that, you know, we, we, we talk about the... Um, the tenure position and people's right to it. We need a code of conduct. You, you just can't do that. People can't write to this agency and take poor people's money and, 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 and use it for these frivolous things. It's such a violation of the trust to the people. And in a country where the median income of our employed persons is so low, that agency should not be giving money to anybody. Nobody should write to the Social Security and ask for money. It's outside the scope of function, and we need to clarify it. And if the lawmakers need to pass a law that puts that, issues that on, on books, then we need to do that. Because these kind of practices should not continue. I will just add this footnote. One of the challenges of our history is that we have a propensity to keep doing the same thing over and over again. We need to solve problems. When things like this come up, you close the loophole, address it. Don't just talk about it today and put it down. Prevent this from happening by making it so difficult. And the Social Security Administration um, has a responsibility to people. When people tell you these kinds of things, expose it. Don't just go with it, expose it, because it shouldn't happen. It should not happen. If you didn't invest and pull that out, we wouldn't know. And now, not only did you take money from the poor people to buy cars for a non-productive event, but now we can't even get a car. The cars go to private places. It is wrong on so many levels. So let's try to, to solve this problem so that tomorrow we don't have the same thing. The president got work to do, and he needs to do the work. I think he can do the work, but he needs to do the, the diplomat we don't need right now. Mr. Ambassador, you president now. So you got to stop sitting down and stand up and direct the activities of the people, especially the ones closest to you. Thank you, Dr. Bupla. Let me bring in Isaac, though. Yeah. Mr. Doe. Yeah, Sandra, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can see the love flowing around this platform for separating President Boikai with any knowledge of everything that is going on. I still pray to God, I may have to fast for about three days to get to a day when President Boikai will know something. Because it does seem, he doesn't know anything. You know, he doesn't know anything. Like people just running the government, anybody wake up, they run. Other person ready, they sit down. Other person ready, they jump up. He doesn't know nothing. I can see the law for trying to do that. But the Liberian people know that you came to power with propaganda. Don't believe me. Your own Minister of Information said it on that form. Said, listen, all the things we're doing are propaganda. Yeah, so now we come to power. You think now the propaganda is enough to carry you through. Unfortunately, the person is not in the know of everything. We all know one thing. The bus that is driving stops at the president's feet. Whatever happens in this government is the president's responsibility. When the people voted, they did not cast ballot for Sylvester or anybody else. They cast ballot for one person, and that person was President Boykai with his vice presidential candidate. So any decision he takes, it is a decision that reflects President Boykai. It is, it is good for you know everything that happened by Sylvester. Let's not forget, it is the very same Ministry of State that ordered LTA not to use their legitimate funding for their operations. 
despite the fact that the Supreme Court had said, hold on, let everything status quo and tea. The president's office said, no, we are so powerful that we will disrespect you, the court, and we will place restriction on the use of the funding. It is the same Ministry of State today. How many more things will we discuss and this president will not be in the know? I will fast and pray, pray for one day where the president will know something. I will fast. That's a radio scene. Please join me. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, crazy that I just to draw you, folks. Let's acknowledge before we bring it, Andrew Mama. And <laughs> Andrew Mama, uh, the rest of the team, let's recognize uh, Senator Prince Johnson's statement. When I verbally attacked Sylvester Grisby, people did not know that I was right. He was planted to destroy us all politically. He is not a member of UP. He is an ANC strong man. Those are JNB, are ANC, CPP, and Liberty Parties. They have amazed too much power to do whatsoever. That's Prince Johnson, the senator from Nima County. We're going to go to you, Andrew Mama. I don't want to be repetitive. I said, if Grisby is wrong, if he did it, he needs to be investigated. But at the same time, if I don't have enough information on the on this matter, I will not make any definitive statement. I will repeat myself again. Yes, if it is wrong, I'm sure he can answer questions pertaining to his own integrity. So I will stop right there. And my second statement will be... Thank you, oh, I didn't finish it. Go ahead, man. My second statement would be that in terms of um, vehicles, when we ask Mary Bro, she says she's not going to put her life on the line to ask anybody the past government for cars. And if anybody thinks they can collect the cars from Joey government, they should go and get it. But she lives here and she's not going to put her life on the line. I just, I, I want to, you know, quote her directly. So I just want to bring that to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew Mama. We want to can hear I, from Can I ask one question? We come to you. It's your turn as a vibe. What does it mean that she's putting her life on the line? This is somebody who can pull those things and flog people on the street. What she mean by that? She that said she wasn't going to collect any vehicle from the CDC government. She's not going to put her life on the line. If anybody wants to do it, they can go ahead and do it. She said it on spoon. She All right, thank you very much, Andrew Mauer. Yes, indeed, she said it on spoon. As I thank you for using your 10 seconds, Mr. Dwalu. <laughs> you laughing? That criminal, that criminal <laughs> act, that way. Dwalu, go ahead. You will come back with me. Uh, uh, Senator, I was saying this. First of all, I got to say happy birthday to Lorena and Kodak Gator. You girls have a great birthday today. But I want to say that though, Senator. Why anybody blaming Mr. Greenspan for anything? The Gola people have a parable. It goes like this. If the village people and the village chief allows a man to come to their village and break their customs and traditions without doing anything, it is not the fault of that individual. It is the fault of the absence or the refusal of the village to act. We have refused to act as a people. Honorable Bwaka is solely and entirely responsible for whatever happens under his administration, whether he likes this or not. Like I'm saying, guys, so listen, we give a leadership to a man. We expect that leadership to be held responsible for whatever happens in the country. If somebody in that government is giving the government a bad image, it is a responsibility of the leadership of that government. The people's business, we continue, we're not talking over. We have continued to become so cavalier about what hammer, what is really bothering the Liberian people? Nobody cares about it. Let me tell you something. Dr. Brockler said this. NASCO does not have money. It has zero dollar. Every money contained within the coffers of NASCO belong to the people. One dollar is like a repository, like a trust. It's like Susu, your whole our money, or your all your gal money, but the all small, small. That, that NASCO job, your whole the money, your investor good. NASCO does not have any authority, not for the government of the Republic of Liberia to take a dime out of that money. 
that money for the people. If we are not protecting that money, we're doing a massive disservice to our people. Police officers, civil servants, teachers, people, like my mother that worked with the transport ministry for many years in the parking lot. Lord, she never got a penny, nothing. And, and, and we just sit down and we think this is okay. We cannot build a society this way, guys. Government is not a child's play thing. If you want to play, go play Mao. When you come to government, it's a serious business. Stanton. Dwayne, you are quite correct. I got two 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 uh transparent mile we used to call it the, the mean something about when you know how to play mile you know uh, myself myself playing it downstairs in the kitchen he, he doesn't know how to play mile. Uh, yes, no, 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 no 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 i know how to, I, I know how to hit so so you know we're playing it in the kitchen but he doesn't know how to play mile and he's just playing around with it and i was just kidding you know you put it between your finger you go like this so when you talk about Mao, it, it came back to me. But again, let us go to Azubad. Azubad, and then we got to move on this knockout thing. I want for Mao to start this knockout conversation because the allegation that Jacob Akori squandered over 600,000 at knockout. I spoke to Jake today. I spoke to Jake today. What is really happening at knockout? Azubad, close us on this Sylvester story. We'll continue the more, then we'll go to oh, the Sorry, I would not be so unfair to my uncle Sam Jackson. So when you do that, we'll bring Sam Jackson in. He's in the back. Go ahead, uh, Abba. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Prince Johnson, again, this government is not a government of only unity party partisans or MDR or whoever. Any librarian should be able to work in this government. It should not be the issue of whether Sylvester. Grace Bay was with ANC or was Mr. Cummings or whoever. The issue be, be, should be focused on the actions that Sylvester Grace Bay took rather than the fact that, that he was a supporter of ANC or of Mr. Cummings. That's just too divisive for me. I think Prince Johnson is on the wrong tangential with this issue. Let's focus on what Sylvester Grace Bay did as an individual or in a capacity as advisor to, to, the, to the president elect. And then we move from those premises, but not the nonsense that Prince Johnson is talking. Thank you very much for closing off, folks. Uh, we, we, we're we going to run through this because we jamming our time, but let's take the last one from Uncle Sam Jackson. Uncle Sam? Uncle Sam? He's on mute. Uncle Sam, can you unmute, please? You can yeah, unmute I'm, yourself. I'm mute. You went back on me. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Okay. Yeah. Look, I like youth. Eh? I like energy of youth. And the the arguments that a lot of the people in the Unity Party will make about putting these octogenarians and septuagenarians in the government and on board is say that they have from the past. But the knowledge from the past brought you to being one of the poorest countries on the earth. So what is it about this knowledge from the past that you want to use from the old people when the knowledge from the past did not make you to be a middle income country? It didn't make you to be an independent country. Their knowledge from the past is supposed to be from people with corporate experience. People that have had corporate experience that became in senior management in their respective areas or either like they were in the military they were they were they were commission officers or there was something in the private sector but people from the public sector in Liberia a contaminated public sector totally contaminated people with 100 percent of their of their of their of their of their working years within the public sector in Liberia those people are not people that should be near any government because the past did not bring you to anywhere good. So you was able, you know, you bring it in this person, that person, that person, because they have a, 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 a vast knowledge. Vast knowledge of where? What is the vast knowledge? What can they be identified with that they have done for Liberia in the public sector to improve the lives of the people? So they have been telling me about they, they are bringing in the people here because they got, they, they got knowledge. Paul St. Jackson, that's about the rest. Like my other friend is supposed to rest. 
They are contaminated by the political economy of patronage, of corruption, of bad faith and ill will. You know, why you think I just relaxed uh, for the last 23 years since I said I left, I won't be in the back and don't be a consultant, but I don't want to be in a leadership position where I'm responsible to make decisions for the lives of people because we have failed. Every government that I work with failed. So I don't have the moral character or moral right, okay, to, to, to be a part of a system of change. It is unfair to the young people if I start to play a critical role in governance. It's not correct because Joe failed, Taylor failed, Ellie failed, Joey failed. Then one can say I want to be in the in 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 government, a new government of change. Doesn't make any sense. So I want for you to look in your minds and think about what I'm saying. Oh, Sam Jackson get beat up. Sam Jackson, Sam Jackson speaks the truth, and this is the truth because I'm basically indicting my generation. I'm indicting the people associated with me at all levels for the last fifty years in Liberia. That we Thank feel. you. So if you want to bring in new people and new ideas, you should be forthright about it. You should be honest about it. You should be fair about it. And you should be straightforward about it. That's my position. Thank you very much, Uncle Sam Jackson. As always, that's why we love you. People are appreciating the fact that you speaking like Uncle Sam Jackson today. So thank you very much for that. So let, let me move on. Let's bring about the knockout issue. The only person that worked at knockout on this show, if I'm correct, is my mate. Okay, so we want to establish something first. Let's talk about the knockout issue. Can we mute, please? We're getting some feedback. Share the information for you. Put the information yeah. in the chat room. Oh, but well, it's a general information. So uh, let me share what I know about Jacob Accordi first. Yeah, um, all that so can be able to. To speak to but then let, now let's do it tomorrow then because I got no, to I'm share the information in the place so we can all right so there, there's an allegation about Jacob Akoli squandering over six hundred thousand dollars so today uh it's all on social media Jacob Akoli was appointed as officer in charge for NOCAL the national oil company of Liberia okay uh, thereafter, the president appointed uh, Swakoko, former representative of District Number Four, Rep uh, Mosarado County, Swakoko Dennis, as uh, the CEO for Nokal. That's a problem. As per the document and what I know, when I called Jake, we're hearing the information today. That a couple of things happening at Nokal. Nokal new building that they trying to complete since the four grade George Manaway at time. That building costs a lot of millions of dollars, Dwalu. Millions. Apparently, George Manaway government gave the company BMC. It's a Lebanese company. They have given them over a million dollars, one point something million dollars. For the second or third phase, they owed 800000 When this government came into power, they were demanding their money. They say, we have our Q quality control team that have determined that this building is up to the place where we can collect our 800,000. Jake as an officer in charge, see a need that they must pay the company or else the company will go to court. The current location of the car two level, every year they pay 150,000 to that location. The owner of the location asking for the money. So also, there's a need for them to pay the 150,000. So the current officer in charge, Jake Kabakori, as I learned, have negotiated to not pay the 800,000, but some of the 800,000, around 400 to 500,000. Surprisingly today, folks said Jake has squandered 600,000 United States dollars from the coffer of the National Oil Company of Liberia. Jake said he made himself available to speak on this issue. Other newspaper entity like the analyst newspaper owned by Stanley Seeker, they reached out to him. Other folks called him Jake and he's willing to speak on it. Mommy, I don't know when the local location is. I never entered the building. I don't know them. You know more. 
is this story adding up or what are you hearing from both ends? Was there any 600,000 squander by local? I mean, just from the information we, we saw on social media and what you shared, I don't think money was squandered. That's the first thing. What we see happening is Jig is paying debt. But we are concerned about the timing of the payment. Why the urgency to make the payment? What are other debts that are not being paid? What makes this debt so important that should be paid? If in fact it is a debt, because we've not seen any document to the effect that Noka owes the contractor 800,000. What I know is that, and that is because of the JPTT report, this property that is being constructed, the contractor received 50% of the total cost of the project upon signing the agreement, 50%. The project was 2.9 million. The cost of the project was 2.9 million. The little rose to 4.4 million. After, according to them, some adjustments were made. So it rose from 2.9 to 4.4. And the contractor received 50% of the 4.4. The JPTT, I think where Jake probably may have or supposed to have waited and observed and not to rush to pay. The entire contract is under investigation by the LACC. The LACC is investigating the contract that led to the, uh, the, uh, the contract that led to the beginning of the construction. The JPTT folks who went there during the transitional period, the information they provided back and forth was that part of the recommendations they were making to the new management team is to review the contract. That's a recommendation from the transitional team that when you come over, when anybody the president appoint, should first go and review that contract because it's a subject of some investigation with the LACC. So in the midst of all that, 50% of the award pay, LACC is investigating. Uh, JPTT people say you should review the contract. I think it was hasty to run into payment, especially so when you are just an officer in charge, the president has appointed, has nominated a CEO that is before the Senate for confirmation. A bow has been constituted. I think it was a haste. But here is my point. If you want to pay debt, I'm concerned about other debts. The staff at Nuka for the last five years, the company owed them. The company owed the staff for the last five years. They've not been able to pay them their education and development fund that they pay every year to each staff for capacity development to go to school, to learn something. I think it's 1,500 per year, per staff. 1,500. All the staff five years have not taken that money because government said no money. You're not concerned about that debt? Is that something to be concerned about? Why the debt about the construction when 50% is already paid? If I was an officer in charge, I wouldn't be rushing to pay that debt. I'll be rushing to pay the debt of the staff to make them comfortable. I'll be waiting for the CEO and the board to come and take over because I'm just officer in charge. I wouldn't commit the company to that extent. So that's why I would say new information emerging. The, the new CEO is supposed to take over. Let's see how it goes. But 
if I were an officer in charge, like Jake was, I wouldn't absolutely be committing the entity in such an a substantial an amount when the CEO is on her way to taking over the entity. How much money was in the account when he went there? How much money? Did you even be concerned about how much money in the account? The account, as per the report from the JPTT folks, was 1.3 million. That's the total amount in the account of the entity that the entity is supposed to run on. And you take 600,000 from there to pay debt for a construction. I think a manager, officer in charge should be sensitive about the growing concern of the company. How will the company survive over the next three, six, nine, ten months to move around to engage stakeholders? When you see, so that, 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 that wrap your mind, mate, because we're getting some documents, but because it's three to seven, which are of course three to eleven in Liberia, uh, we, we want to continue this conversation tomorrow. Uh, I will share the document with you guys concerning the cow. Good. Uh, whether whether it was right or not, uh, people say quite an opportunity, but the document is in line uh, to what Safwa Gray left back. She was a CEO now. Safwa May Gray was a contract legit to BMC. A lot of people are asking. It was done during your wear time. Was the amount appropriate uh, that was given to BMC? So we want to reveal these documents to have a fair argument. And we cannot do that now, but Mommy want to say thank you very, very much. We we appreciate that. So guys, have your 30 seconds on this local issue, then we can do our closing. All right, Dr. Richardson, you want to go on? You know, um, it sounds like a mafia ring to me. Uh, we started with talking about NASCAR, now we're on NUCAL. Uh it, it, it doesn't smell or sound good to me at all. I expected change by now. I expected, you know, at least the talk, talk change should be happening. And people should be thinking about the development of our country. But, you know, it, it's like there's all these scanners that we keep on hearing every day. And, and it's not in the best interest of our country. It's, only, it's like the same thing that used to happen before, you know. Uh, why we this government was supposed to bring change like the other government was supposed to bring change but we're seeing the same circle why is it that we should have I, for the life of me i've never been a part of any organization where one person can just make a unilateral decision on spending money in the organization they you know all the organizations that i've been in they have a board that you have to go through there's a limitation on how you, if you're going to spend a certain amount you have to go to somebody else that make a group decision about spending money. But we have people in our country that can just unilaterally spend money and it's okay. It should not be that way because it's not their money, it's the people's money. So, I mean, it, it, it's very troubling to me because again, some of us are reaching approaching the age of retirement. We wanna go home. Uh, it's not like we can stay here, we can stay here, but our expectation is we want a government that will work for the people. We want a decent place. And we know that we like brains got it inside of us. It's just like somebody have a certain group of people have just hijacked our country. And this is why I come here to talk. And many other people come, or many of you come here to talk. Gotta keep talking until they let our country go. They can no longer hold our country hostage. Thank you very much, Dr. Richardson. And your mama, let's come to you for your closing. Um yes, um, <clears throat> What mommy is saying is true, especially when it comes to BMC. BMC, <laughs> BMC, the cousin Hassan, and SSF. Those are the billionaires in our country. Like I've always said, if we if we cannot give the contracts to Liberians, what it is to build a building? You have qualified Liberians who own construction companies that have built beautiful buildings in the country. But during George we are six years, it was BMC that is lo located on the capital bypass. A cousin Hassan who is located on Kerry Street. BMC, I mean, SSF, who 
is located on um, 11th Street down the beach side. These are the guys that get all the contracts in Liberia and George Weir dealt with only them. BMC, Hassan, they, all the contracts for the public of Liberia. When it comes to rural connectivity or rural construction, SSF. And they even went to the extent of organizing Liberians, registering the business in Liberian names, and then they fund that business to get extra role contracts in those names. So it is it, it is so it is so depressing and disheartening to note that this thing is happening in our country. We cannot stop it. If we don't pull our feet down, we'll forever remain poor. So it is not strange. Those are the guys. And they get paid on time. Nobody else will get a pay on time, but they will get a pay on time. Those are George Weir people. But then you still doing business with them in this government, though, because they have a contract. No, but this contract came from George Weir government because uh, it was on a no call. And, of course, the government has to finish the billing because it belongs to government. So... You cannot take it from there and give it to somebody else because they have taken most of the money. And if you take that contract and give it to any librarian now, it will, it will fall short because Correct. BNC has already collected most of the money. No, that's true. That's true. I'm just saying so. Thank you very much, Andrew Mama. Uh, JJ, what's up? So, um, quite concerning. Um, one of the things I wrote down here is that Jacob Akali was entrusted to be in charge. So I would like, to, I'm wondering his scope of practice or term of reference for his work was to be in charge. So what else was he able to do? And also if this is, if this is true, why was it important for him to start to pay that bill? Are there other accounts that he checked to see who all the, or why was this? I mean, I would hope that, I would hope that, he is interviewed or like he has volunteered to talk about it, it will be important for him to, for people to ask him and for him to answer some of these questions. Why was this the first bill that he paid? Why was there a rush to pay a bill instead of trying to stabilize the organization or meet or pay employee salary based on what we're hearing? So I think these, these are concerning and there are questions people have to ask. And I will hope that he has he has answers to them, uh, um, based on what we're hearing from Angel Mama and also from Mame. It's important that he speaks about this. Thank you, thank you, Vladi, Mr. Duaru. Thank you, thank you, Nida. How you say? I want to say this to you, Mama. The frustration is important. Doctor Franklin did say something. Whenever any organization is wrong. When they come to a spending money, a committee does that with certain approvals. It's a reason for checking battles. But I got a few questions to say to you guys. So listen, I remember well, whenever a government organization rushes to pay money to, a, to somebody the government is indebted to, most of the reason being is because there is a red bar, red bar component to it. Whoever is in charge get a kickback and they rush to pay that money. Now, I'm not suggesting that's what Jake did, but usually that is the case in Liberia. Look. Jake is a placeholder. Officer in charge, maybe he found a euphemistic way to stay. He's a placeholder. Should he be making that kind of financial decision for the entity? That's why that, that, I ask a question. Should he be? And like Mimi said, why, is it, why the rush when you have young men and women working at Nokia that haven't gotten paid for almost five years? Well, having paid some of the benefit for almost five years. Why wasn't that a priority? Why is the priority towards BMC? And by the way, who the hell pays the contractor substantial amount of money in advance in a third world country before he or she completes that contract? There's only one explanation to that. They're not really paying the contractors. They are paying themselves that money up front so they can get the money up front because they don't trust that the contractor is going to give them the money back. Liberians, your country will continue to go to the dogs if you keep quiet. No society transforms with timidity or passivity or that a people team. If we don't open our mouths, we will have no country. Y'all can call me so y'all may all you want. 
What's happening to Labiba breaks my heart every single day because I know what we are capable of. But yet and still, we refuse to effectuate that change that will transform at least up the standard of living in that country to some degree. Is this what we want? Stanton, it is just, it just, it just, it, it breaks my heart every day because we are prepared now. Look, Liberia is in the diaspora. Go to Liberia. LU is putting our graduates by the dozen. AMB Zion University. So we got experts now. We got people trained to actually move this shit forward. But we just stagnated in this one position because hmm, you're the papi, eh? that connection, that connection, connection with our production is stupidity. Stanton. Ah, c'est bon. <clears throat> right. If all this stuff is true, that his major action was one single payment to one entity, it's very disappointing. What kind of analysis went into making that payment? What other debts were there? I would know of one set of debt with the people with benefits. What was the state of this project or this contract or this agreement? Have they done maybe 75% of the work, 65% of the work, or is this considered a prepayment? So for me, I can't just jump to a conclusion, but the regular smell test tells me that something arise, something not correct in this whole kind of situation. And it's something that needs, you know, deeper investigation. You got to look at the financial picture of the institution. And then what is the role of the officer in charge? Are those kind of financial decisions where you got 1.3 million balance, you know, again, if it's factual, and you pay off nearly half of the asset, the liquidity of the institution at that particular time? Were you just there for a month or two months as caretaker? Probably not even that long. I don't know. It makes no sense to me. And hopefully Jake can come on this platform, you know, and explain himself. Jake is a personal friend, but this is about Liberia. We cannot have those kind of actions being taken by caretakers and other people with no clarity around the decision making. It's just too huge. Thank you very much, Abba. Dr. Bopla. Um, the act that established NoCal in 2000, this is 2024. What is the real benefit to the Liberian people? It's very heartbreaking because every time you get news from there, um, somebody is demanding their servants benefit. I mean, you're talking about major money in a very poor country. And then somebody have the liberty to just, you know, go get money and stuff. What is the real benefit to the people? So we keep seeing this culture of impunity where people are free to just put their hands where they don't belong because they don't believe anything's going to happen. It needs to stop. There needs to be a redirect of the people's resources where the people can benefit directly. Remember, most of our nation resources are in the public sector. That's the government. And so when we make these kind of big investments like no cow, we need to see something. 24 years later, I'm still waiting to see how the Liberian people benefit from no cow. Thank you very much, Dr. Volpleck. Uh, I believe Mr. Jackson spoke on this issue, right? Uncle Sam? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, thank Dr. you. Dr. Volpleck. I was one of the, I was one of the the people who put uh, NoCal together. Uh, in 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 the year two thousand, I was a consultant, and Jenkins Dunbar, Trafford Cromine, uh, Jackie Curry, and others. Okay, uh, the whole idea was to basically delineate the oil blocks, and to have a credible oil development program that would uh, enrich Liberians. So we put in the, the NOCA Act of 2000 that 20% of all oil blocks must have Liberian equity participation, meaning the state will have the uh, free carry interest. And then they would uh, 
create a structure to pass that on. You know that uh, only one set of Liberians have benefited from that. That for black, black number 13, if you remember, and we'll call his name, uh, David, David Jala, Councilor David Jala, uh, Albert Chair, Jonathan Mason, the late Willie Mobot, they gave themselves black number 13. 11, 12, and 14 went to uh, Oranto. Most of the oil blocks, we deal in 17 oil blocks uh, to this TGS NOPEC uh, oil company. And most of the oil blocks were granted out between 2003 and 2005 under the transitional government. Sadly, when Ellen came, I tried to advise her on basically repealing all of them. Because I mean, when you're giving you know, an asset of such magnitude with such great impact on the, 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 the economic security of the country, she could have just basically, but she went along with it. And they tried to quote unquote fix it by giving blacks number 11, 12, and 14 to Chevron, giving Exxon, Anadarko, and all of that. But I can tell you, NorCal has been a dumping ground for all governments since it was created. It was a dumping ground for Taylor, dumping ground for Ellen, dumping ground for George Weah, and it looks like it's a dumping ground for Joseph Boycott today. Which means it's not you accomplishing. All resources we, that will catapult your country. It's, it's not accomplishing what it was. Look, during the, during the whole drilling process, the Petroleum well, Act of 2002 is set. It's very clear. And, and, and other that areas like are not $3 million benefiting. Dollars and under. Yeah, the Petroleum Act of, I mean, I, and I'm not benefiting. They are no, when I, I was a, I was a consultant. And no cap. And what I was trying to do was to create a platform for oil companies, right? The oil, oil development to have linkages to the Liberian economy, to provide opportunities for Liberians to provide service to the to the oil rigs that were out there. Liberian companies did not provide services. They, most of the services were coming out of Tema. So look, let us get to uh, Jake. Jake is a very good friend of mine. And um, what, what happened looks very bad. He needs to explain himself. Jake and I, I mean, go back a long ways. I met him when he was vice president of NoCal. I took him to Southern Africa and we basically tried to like, you know, create some structures over there. So Jake is very, very good friend. Jake went to my house in Soweto. Okay, very, very close friend of mine. But he needs to explain why he did it, give us the, 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 the business pressure, and then the competing priorities that made him to do that. He needs to give that because he is Joe Boyka's nephew and one of the closest political advisors to Joe Boyka. And if, the, if it seems to be going in this direction, it doesn't look good because all really Joe Boyka has, as far as I'm concerned, okay, is his integrity because Joe, Joe Boyka has not uh, <coughs> as a good manager, as somebody who can put policy together, but he's a good thing for the country for now and integrity. And I can tell you Thank now, you. Uh, can I, can I ask you something? It's getting a little bit antsy about things that are going on. So let's say this. Uh, yeah. let, let's, let, me, let me say this real quick. Yeah. You can come in. So the, um, the LACC have opened an investigation. Uh, what about the Can I ask a question, please? I beg you. Yes, you will, Uncle Sam. Please finish. be patient. Please be patient, Uncle Sam. <laughs> the, the LACC have opened an investigation into this matter, and they have asked folks uh, from the cow uh, as to the payment and structure. They spoke with the former CEO, Sephora May Gray. They called for the lawyers, uh, but just also Apiton, the guy that came to tell of folks, the guy that took over from Azeva, Stella Barrow, and Mr. Cummings. He's the board chair for NOCAL, Apiton. And Apiton will be going through that building for the very first time on Thursday. So that's a gradual entry and exit. The former representative, Swakoko Dennis, has been confirmed. She will be taking over likewise. You got Azanko from the Liberty Party. I know he's the first, second, or third vice president. I don't know, but he's a vice president appointed by the president. 
And now that was the big issue about who can make the appointment of the vice president. Should it be the bill or should it be the president? But here we go again. We want to say, let me show you the building as it stands right now, the local building. Um, you just got to understand that it's a tough place. My issue remains, was there any misappropriation? I just want someone to answer me. I know we say, why the rush? Why are you paying this? But was there any misappropriation uh, Abula Mambe that you can speak to before our sister Glennie asked a question to um, to Mr. Jackson. Was there any one misappropriation that you think warrant investigation? That is the reason, that is what the LACC is investigating and that's the reason why in fact we should not be making payment because the LACC, I mean nobody knows, that's why the LACC is investigating. So because the LACC is investigating, because the JPTT folks recommended that the new management team take a look at the contract. If our an OIC officer in charge, I wouldn't rush to make a payment. Especially so when the CEO is already appointed, the board is constituted, and it will be taken over in the next two, three weeks. I wouldn't make a payment. I will probably be paying attention on the staff areas, their benefits. To make them comfortable and relaxed going forward in the future let a new management come and make a decision i wouldn't know whether there's misappropriation i wouldn't know whether there's corruption until the lacc can conclude its investigation and that's why I would okay. it until the investigation is concluded so let me put this up there you go the location the building all right uh these guys and say we have reached to the limit that we need to make another withdrawal give us the eight hundred thousand, and i think jake said he negotiated with them to pay less for now, so there you have it. All right, I want to bring in as it do, uh, but uh, Glennie JJ, ask Uncle Sam your question, then we're gonna bring in as it do. So, you know, quite a few times Uncle Sam have um condemned his generation today. He indicted, he said his generation is indicted. Um, I want to ask you the fact that you said this. Will you be accepting any consultancy? Because if you're condemned, you should not be accepting. I want to ask you publicly. Since you're saying that we shouldn't trust you all, you all can't do the work, you're already past the age. I want to ask you, should anybody be trusting you with a consultancy work? Is he I'm an Irish expert. I mean, what are you like? It or not, I mean, on a global. But you condemn your generation, so how will okay, trust me again? I'm a global. I'm a. I'm a. I'm a knowledge expert on a global level. Ninety okay. percent of the consultancies I get. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'm. I'm. I'm, I'm asking. I'm speaking to your question. Okay. Ninety percent of the consultancy work I do in Liberia is not paid by the Liberian government. It's paid by the international system. UNDP, USAID, World Bank, IFC. The West by the Swedish government. And most of the consultants that do are competitive. It's not like somebody take me from the street and say, I say, can't do it for me. If there's a competitive process now and I send my CV and the international system is paying me for it, and I mean and I'm competing with other people and they give it to me, it means that I'm the best, I'm going to do it. But remember, a consultant is not a policy expert. So when I make recommendations, I don't run that program. All the things that I have done is only recommendations. That what a consultant does as an independent contractor. I don't take Thank responsibility you. for what my principals do or fail to do. So that's a big difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, and uh, people Mr. Jackson. That are being better, they don't have the same kind of competency. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Principal. They, don't have, they haven't worked in the international system before. Thank you. We're finally Most getting the answer. I just want to ask you because you condemn okay. your so generation. So answer. we should not but trust your generation to do anything because you condemn your generation. I will not take it. Oh, thank you, you very much, guys. Glenny, thank you. Mr. Jackson, thank you. Let's close the program. It's been a wonderful yeah. program, a beautiful show. Well, thank you very we'll much. Continue I'll, I'll the, you. We'll continue with the. Uh, we'll continue with this story about. Something is happening badly at LDC. We just can't let it go. We'll do the phase two of the social security. Too bad. And the grace we'll also talk more about no car tomorrow. But the LDC issue, 
on two or three occasions when the captain rejected the CFO, he was appointed. He went to LDC. Money captain saying back and say, I cannot take you. The CFO. Mm. He rejected him. Mm. The board chair, he was also rejected. They intend to audit LDC. That's what folks are talking about right now. LDC must be audited. LDC must be audited. But who defending who? Who calling the shots? Let's do our closing. It will be interesting tomorrow, folks. Like every day we come here to talk about the issue. You know me, I hold no personal bullets. All my bullets, I let them go. If they hate you, they hate you, because I don't want them coming back. So we just say to every one of you, to the Dr. Francine Chino with Richardson, I will be eating mango plums pretty soon. And your mama. Always oh, telling people's story. And your mama that 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 that, that rented her apartment to Grace Bay so she can talk about Grace Bay on the show tonight. Glenny JJ Samuel Jackson, my own. Okay, uncle. no story for me. Uh, I keep calling. The story coming that a ball player uh, as if I my own man that went to Texas and he put has a force him to leave and go back home. And Mr. Dualu, my military partner. I want to say people ask instead of why you say this. That's the reason why Andrew Mama couldn't talk about Grace Bay because she rented one of her units to Grace Bay, you know, up on 14th Street around there. We know we got a story. But let's do our closing. I want to go to bed sign. If I had to keep that within me, Mame, I wasn't going to go to bed sign today. Thank God I said it and I leave my own with God. People ask me why Andrew Mama defended Sylvester Grace Bay. Because she rented one of her apartment to Sylvester Grace Bay. That's why. Andrew okay. Mama, you fought on his own. <laughs> and mama, I don't know who muting you all. <laughs> but uh okay, well, let me call Asido. Let him do his closing, then we'll bring you back, mommy. Mommy, don't leave. Well, let me bring Asido on, please. All right. Asido, we're closing the show. You go first, and then we can wrap this thing up. But please don't attack Angie Mama. What I say about she rented her apartment to Grace Bay, it's not your business. Talk on the issue, please. You are meeting a man when I hear you. No, and, and, and Angie Mama is my mother. We we, we do out our child in, in, uh, in mother clinic. So um, I always got her back. I will always defend her anyway. When you attack her, I will, I will attack you to defend her. So actually, you should you get that. Uh, so um, first off, let me start off by uh, giving a right hand salute to my party the Coalition for Democratic Change, the CDC, for identifying today with the prior victim from the apostolic ministry, someone around Bamoma. This is something you've always done. Please always impact in the lives of our people. And uh, we always send our heartfelt to all of those across the country who are engulfed in this unprecedented fire situation. I think that the nation needs God's intervention because a lot is going on. I also want to join my uh, political leader, uh, former President George Weir, who's always on top of his game by sending his congratulatory treat to the president-elect of Senegal, one of the youngest presidents elect in Africa, around just 44 years old, uh, very stark different from other countries. Uh, our president, uh, our former president, my leader, extends his congratulations to you. And all of us who believe in him and his leadership also do the same. And let me end on this note as well. Uh, we witnessed a very embarrassing episode today at the LCRC where um, two persons appointed went to take office. One of those people went at this confirmation hearing. When the other person went there with their own letter too, it was a scene of some chaos. It was so funny, interesting, and, you know, it is not the, one, the only place anyways. LACRA also has two persons occupying the same position. It is the first government where two people are now appointed to one per position. So one person works in the day, the other person works in the night, I guess. Uh, that's how it is. And a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Um, we've discussed good show today. Uh, good thing, at least we did not discuss CDC short, CDC tall, CDC long, and we discussed what matters to our country. But let me call on the government. You know, our friends from Ghana, you know, I just spoke with a few of my friends there. 
from the Butubaro camp who actually were removed. I'm not sure if there has been any intervention from the government. I know the CDC and our political leader have been having some discussions to see what we can do in our weak ways to help our people. I think the government, being a government of all of the people of Liberia, we need to look towards our friends over there. Uh, things not very okay. Some of them want to come home. If they can help, that would be good thing. But thank you for the show, Energy Mama. Please go Pamata tomorrow because I want to come over to have some good food. Thank you so much. Wow. There you go. Go ready again, Mercy. Oh, uh, let's move on. That to Richard say. So um I, I want to use a, a prior quote that I heard from Mr. Alexander coming said so you cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and over and expect a different result. We would take someone like Mr. Grispin in this modern world where people are using computers and gadgets and put him in charge of the minister, the minister of state. We'll continue to hold someone like uh, uh, Bamus, Balamus or whatever his name is and put him to NACRA. So I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing his name. Put him to NASCAR in charge of people's social security. He's been there for years. They fired the secretary and they still kept him as secretary to the board. We'll continue to, to keep those people. What happened to the young people? What happened to the new brain, the fresh ideas that can come into our country? What happened to mentoring people? So if we continue to keep doing these things, having people just unilaterally you know, make decisions, act like the big shot in our country, they can just order cars, get paid six hundred thousand dollars for contracts and just move on that bureau not go nowhere okay we'll be talking 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 that will not stop me from talking and not stop the rest of the panelists from talking so let's try to think wiser and think for a better liberia i don't know who's next sis lady you want to go i can go um yep. great um great show i would like to I hate to do this, but I have to do this. Um, George Weah was not a very interactive president. The people got burned. On Tapetaro, George Weah did not go there. There's so many things happened. George Weah did not identify. For us to sit here and hear that George Weah was the king and George Weah was this and he was concerned with people, that's, that's just not true. And the, 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 the history is there. It's, it's, it's there. So we should not we should not hear some things we'll hear and just let it slide. But there are some things that we'll hear and we're not allowed to slide. They're just just to be factual. Number two, the people in Butenburg camp, the government of Ghana warned the president, warned President Weah's government many months, many, many months. Why it is that the president, the current government needs to, 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 to intervene but this was warning that they had years upon years upon years. And President Weah did nothing. And you're coming to say, oh, because President Weah congratulated for the four-year-old president, that makes him what? The king of presidency in the world? Give me a break. Give me a real break. If President Weah really care about his citizens, there will have been something in place for those people in Ghana so that they would know where they were going. There would have been something worked out. It's not something he didn't know about. He knew about it. So I, 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 my, my father used to say vehemently, I want to vehemently oppose every single thing that Minister Do just said. Because President Weah was not a president that identified with the plight of the Liberian people. And we cannot continue to sit here and allow and hear those things and make it seem like we didn't hear it. No, he was not the president of the people. Why is that football? made him a popular president. When he came to serve the Liberian people, he failed us. And we must remember to say that. If they had done something, it would have been better. But they did nothing. And now it's, it's also not, not them not doing anything it doesn't mean that Bweka shouldn't. I think, that it's, I think the foreign ministry and the ambassador of Liberia to Ghana, I think they need to be able to do something. Because clearly some of those people they don't have they don't have any way out they have nowhere to go so it's important for them to address that 
other than that, I have really no other comments. Um, like I said, if if Minister Grispe is involved, and he's the, he's the nucleus of all of these information, then an investi an investigation a swift investi investigation needs to be done quickly, so that this story is cut till cut short, and we know the inner end about it. But great show. Um, it was good being here. Thank you. Why you? What would sound like you host? Because I have a whole host voice. I'm a singer. Uh, uh, I sing uh, alto, no, and no, I've been no, singing no. for many years. <laughs> That's why I'm, I sound like a like a singer. You no, know, Mahela Jackson. I, I'm, I, I'm sorry to ask the question. Do I go ahead? <laughs> Don't mind here, Glenny. Look, our people. Y'all, thank you so much. We had a great show today to the rest of the panelists. Y'all, thank you so much. I will continue to say this, my people. Governments are instituted to stir between the people and chaos. Government intention is to bring stability to that society within that stability so you can up the standard of living of the people. If your government is not doing that, the government itself is fostering instability in our society. Honorable Boakai, the message of your government cannot be that the government encourages acts that are actually counter to the development of the country. You have to tackle that directly and swiftly, Mr. President. We fought for this with everything. We expect something better from this administration. Anybody who's going to the contrary, going counter to what the Liberian people want, that person must be sidelined, removed from the government because the people must be served. If the actions of the government officials are not serving the people, that very person must be removed from government through our courts. We have to address this issue because, Mr. President, for far too long, this country is just stuck in one place, in one place. Look, I want people in government, especially, and most of Liberia, or all of us, we ask ourselves, but especially people in government, ask yourself this question. What will be your legacy to this country? Will you leave Liberia a better place? How much money does one man need? If you want to become a multi-millionaire, please go to the private sector. The public sector is where you come to serve and leave a good name for you and your children, for all the posterity to judge you about this. But we take the meager resources of our country and we say we're forcing in the country. You can't force when you're in the private sector. But when Dwalu comes to government and all of a sudden he can buy the generator for a mosque, they say, oh, they made cool. I can buy three pope for a church. I'm a criminal. And we have to treat crim criminals in kind. They are not helping us, Mr. President. You have to take control of this. If this is what is happening, we put the if condition on everything we've said here because we want you to first come and address it. The direction of this society must be to uplift all of us, even in Riverside County. Please, Mr. President, take a, take a hold of this. That's, that's <laughs> insulting. What do you mean, even in Riverside? No, because again, for my Rose and my beloved Rose, you missed the point. The name for Rose. No, because I buy, I buy, I buy a gay one to run in Rose. Oh, oh, oh. He ran before the he ran before they beat him there. He want to go back there. Go ahead, Abba, talk to us. The, the people of Liberia are not ready for a leader. Let me, brother. They're not ready for that. So we just support people who they're ready for. Give us your closing, Abba. Wonderful, yeah. Um, like I said, I hope this rescue mission does not turn into a miscue mission where they're just making errors here and there. I mean, for what I'm seeing, these things could be avoided. Hopefully, there's reasonable, acceptable explanations for this, but it's hard to fathom that, you know, before inauguration, We'll be asking for $117,000 from somewhere, probably even $234,000 if those $217,000 payments were made. Then at $234,000 um, we're talking about, which to me is just way out there. The situation with Jake, since they're investigating it, I don't have to say much, but obviously, I don't think that $600,000 decision, nearly 45% of what's in the coffers should be a decision that an officer in charge should make. <clears throat> but what I also want us to do is probably <coughs> take a closer look, stay at the budget. The budget here is still got all kind of things. Uh, um, look, if we look at the Ministry of Finance over time, no, organize, no institution in government has grown like 
from a budget perspective like the Ministry of Finance. Look, in 2015, 2016, the actual expense of the Ministry of Finance was 28 million 474. By 2016, 2017, on early, they went up by 56% to 44 million. When 2018 came, by 2021, they have gone up the 2020 2021 budget when they will stay what like half of one year to half of the next year. They increased from that 44 by 42 percent to 63 million dollars in 2022. That special budget they increased by 142 percent from that 62.9 to 152 million dollars. Okay, so in 2023 budget. They put in one for the nine million. They spent only 102 million so far. So we're getting that. But this 2024 budget, Ministry of Finance is there for 172 million, 952,333 dollars. I think we need to delve into those numbers and break them down and see why the Ministry of Finance is growing exponentially over time. When Ministry of Education, Ministry of Agriculture and probably even Ministry of Gender, they're not getting this level of expansion. So in a, in a government, I think the execution should be with those other line ministries and the finance ministry is the policy arm, the, for the fiscal policy arm, the person that monitors the expenditures and stuff, not necessarily the person that should be doing all the expenses. So maybe we need to look at some of these things and find them out, but you know, I think we really, really need to do something better when it comes to the Ministry of Finance. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Boblet? I continue to believe that one of the greatest fight of this president is to fight with the budget. That's how you show you're real for the people. Mind the numbers, the data, and say, where is the people here? Like Alva just said, how does one ministry budget just keep increasing exponentially? Um, how are the people benefiting? Bureaucratic increase does not translate into economic development. My closing, uh, Mr. CEO, I hope will be an opening for opportunity for another show. I live in Magibi, Boystown Junction, to be exact, Gaia Town. I drive on this main thoroughfare every day. It has become one of the most dangerous parts of the, of the driving experience in Liberia. On Saturday, a, a pen pen motorbike with a driver and a passenger was run over by a truck. And both of them were killed instantly, badly um, dismembered. The driver fled the scene which those of us who are here or you know what's on it, uh, tending on the ground, you know, that not always heartless criminal is actually, I'm trying to save my life. So the driver of the truck flees, fled the scene, and they burn his truck. Jungle justice took over. It's a common thing now in Liberia. They burn his truck, like burn, burn, burn. No police. The police force, I said before, is deteriorating and degenerating into an escort service. I think we need to do way more with um, IG coma. We need to come. We need to have a series on this because public safety is national security, and national security will facilitate economic development. The last thing I want to say is this morning at seven ten on my way to work, I saw a Peking that looks like he is not more than eight years old, pushing a wheelbarrow with a big um, cooler in it. It's 710 on a Monday morning. He's not in school. He's pushing a wheelbarrow. Why? Because the economic conditions are harsh and all of the families are helping sometime just to feed that group. I appreciate the fact that our new Minister of Education is touring the Southeast and doing an assessment of our, our schools in that region. That's great. But I'm anxious to hear what she's going to tell us when she comes back in terms of the national vision, particularly 
for putting elementary school students in school and making our schools fully public again, like when we went there and not private public, where you have to pay for every sheet of paper, every form, every application. We cannot be serious about nation building if the elementary education is not a priority. No seven, eight year old should be trying to find rice to eat at seven o'clock, eight o'clock on a school day, they should be in school. And we need leaders who are hands-on, who will inspect what they expect and get out of these big offices and come on the field so you see what's really happening to the citizenry and get a better sense of what's needed. So I hope that we can do more with elementary education and our police force that is fast becoming an escort service. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Thank you very much. Uh, Black, let's check the CEO thing off of the course. Tentel is better, a spoon. Yeah, you know. CEO that Malatiji Kanana. CEO that that riches is. CEO that. No, you let it mean. Don't be acting bad. No, no. You pretend. You know, you let it mean. You don't want to waste our time. You know, everybody can talk. I would not get angry, but your voice gets something in it that can irritate my brain. I would not cool people, no cool people voice. Cool people, no cool people voice. <laughs> Go ahead, Uncle Sam. Can you close, please? We got to wait five seconds before you hear us. Uncle Sam, one, two, yes. three, okay. <laughs> yes, okay, look. Great show. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of you. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, I mean, the spirit of the base that we have here is a clear indication that Liberia has probably the most liberal democracy in West Africa. I mean, we, we've had what, uh, I think about three or four presidential elections. We've had uh, many by-elections. We've had, we had two change of, of power from one administration to another. We continue to do well in terms of our democratic um credentials what is missing the missing element is uh unity and and one is a purpose to develop a a strategy a long-term strategy with some quantifiable benchmarks to make our country better and that is where we fail we fail because we don't put the time the effort and unite around around a common purpose I think Joseph Boycott, uh, for my generation, okay, or for my age group, is our last hope. And because it's our last hope, um, I am not going to be have a radical approach to Mr. Boycott to radically criticize him. But I will be very forthright in my credit. In my credit, it will be objective. Um, I made myself to write every two or three days some objective analysis of current conditions. We are planning, the government is planning to write a national development plan, which will be funded by the Swedish government. I think it's like 400,000. I think that money is too small. We got 600,000 from the high level panel to support Ellen Johnson's elite role when she was co-chair of the post-2015 development agenda. You need about a million dollars. You need about a million dollars to bring in the best. And this is where Glennie, people like me come in. I would like to be part of the national development plan, writing of the national development plan. And I would like it to be a competitive process. I would like to compete with other Liberians. Great Jackson. Liberians more educated, better credentials that they can get, you know, forget about LSE. They, 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 they are younger, more energetic and more, but they, they don't come to the fore because we don't seek them out. There's no national database of Liberian professionals around the world. We have our best professionals in country and around the world that can facilitate the process of development. We need to bring him in. I'm a loud mouth. I accept that. I'm cantankerous. I accept that. Okay, so I may not be the appropriate person for the political process. But in terms of the technical processes of development, whether it's a competitive process, I would throw my hat in there. And maybe we got it. But Stanton, I want you to tell uh, Burma, and I, and I hope he's listening, that the National Development Plan 
has to be a serious attempt to create something for posterity. Uh, Singapore, Malaysia, these countries, they exist because they created a plan. They catalyze resources, they mobilize international resources, and they implemented those plans. They had numbers, they had benchmarks, they had targets. They were aligned to the global standard, the sustainable development goals that I was one of the economists, the global economists who put that together, the 17 sustainable development goals. I hope and Thank pray you. that Omen Boyka can solve the little key. I mean, the, the issues that is going on, these are all kinks, right? But if you do not basically eviscerate the kinks with the corruption, with the apparent corruption, if you don't take charge of that and send a clear signal to your people that you will not tolerate this, you will become just a like a run of mill Liberian government, corrupt, okay, uh, characterized Thank by you. inertia and undermine the growth and development of people of Liberia. Joseph Boyka, this is an opportunity to show that you have the ability to make decisions by dealing with people who are closest to you, investigate, and if you find them culpable, take the appropriate action. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. I will, my mail will be the last to close. When I do a quick close, closing, I want to say thanks to every one of you. Thank you for joining us, wherever you are. Uh, we can pause a little bit. We we'll take our questions once the guys leave. I didn't close. Hey, oh, I didn't close. Oh, oh, hey, hey, I'm sorry, Andrew, Mama. Close now, please. I'm so sorry. Close. Thank you. I like to say to the Liberian people, first of all, Stanton was just joking. You know, they make him pull everybody's legs. He was just joking. I'm not listening any property to Mr. Crispy. Thank you. Now, I wonder why. Let me add, let me add my voice. It was a joke, folks. I always joke how with Auntie Mama. It was a joke. Thank you. Go ahead, okay. Auntie Mama. So I like to. I'm, I'm wondering why I like to ask Liberian people this question. Why is it that NASCAR, the second in command, were fired because of disrespect to the President of the Republic of Liberia and morning captain? Of LEC, they respected the president also, and Mr. Grispe got his stay in the seat. I think it is wrong. If you want to fire somebody for gross disrespect to the president and to the government, then I think, then I think that uh, uh, money captain need to be dismissed. Thank you. But you cannot wait. No, they say justice has no eyes. You cannot have money captain that refusing the president's letter or whatever, sitting in the seat, Mr. Crispin knows about it, and he keeping him there, and then you fire NASCAR deputy. That one is totally odd. I think the yeah. president needs to look at that. That's cross disrespect to the seat of government. Then um, when you talk about CDC government, I just want to touch on it a little bit. When the landslide happened in Nima County, I think about 200 persons died. Senator, I think Representative Koga or Senator, I don't know what he's Senator Representative, I've forgotten. He had to single-handedly bury those people, some of the people that he pulled out of the mud. President, we are never went there until today. He never went to sympathize with the people of Nima. They did it when he needed votes. He went to Nima County. I want to bring that up now. The last one I like to talk about CEO. You know, over the years, um, Liberians have been suffering. Even though we ask, we 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 adore or we appreciate the foreigners here to do business, but we got to equally look at our people. If we go to say that Liberians must become millionaires. Like Ghanaians, like Avroans, they will must be this this government must be able to put the feet the feet to fire. It is totally wrong, Mr. Jetty, Jetty, who has Jetty store in Liberia. They come in this country or nothing. They come and get rich because of the Liberians. Now you cannot encourage 
Liberians to come home and do business. And then when they come home, then you, you want to marginalize them, you want to step on them, and then the government is sitting and looking. I'm speaking directly to the president, you say, you have to look into this because you encourage a Liberian to come home, all Liberians to come home. Uh, the, 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 the CEO of this company, okay? American, what the company mean? Um, what did I write? One minute. American Global Industrial Group of Companies. This guy that owned it, they call him Mr. Gabriel Rabos. Mr. Gabriel Rabot. He owns the, the, this company. He has built a very big facility CEO up in Kakata, Bomma Rose. You should go there. I went there today and I saw it. This man, has, he spent almost a million dollars building the factory. He got Liberians, you know, that he implored to put food on the table to pay the children's school fee. All those people are sitting down, down, they are sitting down today because Mr. Jetty has said that they will not sell rubber internationally, but he will force them to sell rubber to him, Jetty. Who is Jetty? Jetty is just an Indian man that came with a bag and he didn't have a dime and today all money has made him rich. But equally so, if Joseph Human Parker, who is, a, who is our president, has people to come home and they listen to him and they came home and, and open a big royal factory and run a competition with Jetty, I think they should run competition with him. But you cannot stop Mr. Robert, Mr. Gabriel Robert from exporting his robbers and you telling him he should sell to Jetty and her, and Jetty is boasting that he will close the factory down, he will make sure he marginalizes him, he got all the Liberian people in the pocket. The committee that was set up, they are only giving the privilege and the chance to Jetty to export 90, 90, 90 continuous to, I mean, abroad to make money, and they stopping Mr. Gabriel Rabos. Are you, are you fighting for are you fighting for Mr. Gabriel Rabos? I'm fighting for Gabriel Rabos and the rest of the Liberian the Liberian Rabos Association. It is no. it is bad to cease to have them have the rubbers uh or sitting there in the different factories and then they can't export it. Only Jetty is allowed to export the rubber. This is totally wrong. How do oh, we the reason, the reason why I'm asking you because the reason why I ask you the reason why I ask you the reason why I asked you, Andrew Mama, because I think, uh, uh, I remember when I came on the show and said those issues will not be any longer. So we want to see, I mean, the jetty issue, everything, every privilege that George Ware gave him. Yeah. I know, I know why you're angry, but these are the things we are still talking about. Yes. He the only Indian Liberian from 5.5 million people to bring or steer up in the country. Why? I mean, don't know increase the pressure, but there's the way in which we can address this thing. Well, let's get to Jetty. This thing is it, bad. The rest issue, the cement issue, it's very bad for our country. But again, man, I hear you. I hear you, Andrew Mama. It's very bad for Liberia. We can make it as a nation if we continue on this path. Yes. So it's, just it's not racism. It's not racism. And, and the Liberians are crying. They can't sell a rubber. Only Jetty is allowed to sell a rubber. And they set up a committee. To and then at the end of the day, Chris Brown County Jetty will go to the graveyard on Central Street, put people on and start feeding them. Then they say, oh, Jetty, oh, Jetty. No, but and see, oh, is what, is kind of nonsense, what kind of nonsense is that? He's paying hey. people on the radio $30 oh, wow. to get stuff for him. He paid well, people, well, and the main well, rubber is dead. The, the rubber association cannot sell the rubber because Jetty say he got everybody in the packet. We, is will, call, we will call Ari Modell and we will address this issue with Ami. That's all we need to do. He's a commerce minister. Let him give us some direction. Okay. I mean, it's not far. We'll call Amin Buddha and we'll okay. tell Amin Buddha answer is this what you want in the country? 
I mean, this thing can be so in, in, a, in the trigger on my eye. Thank you, Andrew Mama. Thank you. Okay. Let, me, let me go ahead and do a quick, very quick, Mama. I won't keep you for last and you can take us home. Because once you speak, you'll be out of here. And that'll be our own problem. So let me say this real quick. Thank you to all of you that joined school today. We encourage you to come back tomorrow. We will not stop talking. We will not stop talking. We got to get it right. And somebody say in the sound of people chat room, Abba, they say, hey, Stanton, where this point is this and that. Listen, my father from Lessington, Sando. My mom from Greenville, Sando. I was born behind MTA. So you decide who I am. Grew up in Nukuta. That's another small Sando. So you're not really Sando, man. So you cannot say anything. That's why I get no secret. When you talk it, I will talk it. If you don't want me to talk it, say please don't talk the one, but talk the one. But when it comes to Labro, we gotta say it all. Folks, it's bad for our country. We gotta pray for Jose Yuma Buaka. If Jose Yuma Buaka, the president, know of these things that are happening, and he decided not to act and take action, then well, we pray to God for long life and we're for 2029. But if Jose Yuma Buaka that we know of, we know he will take action. Because these are embarrassment. This is not what the people walking poopoo -poo water for. It is not. We never insult the president. We never say bad things, but we will hold the president responsible for the well-being of our country. Make no mistake. How can Sylvester Crispy sit there, run this thing, and when somebody tells you, oh, we're not in campaign no more. But don't forget that campaign brought you there. We are not running politics. It's not campaign, we understand, but do the right thing. Stop changing appointments. When the president turns his back, you put your own people there. Double appointments to the same positions. Where's the cars? The SUV, five of them, why are they? We'll let you know tomorrow why are they. With President Joseph Barker, look into his face and tell him you are wrong. Would the speaker call for a special investigation? Let the speaker call Sylvester Grisby today and ask him questions today. Will Yombly and the senators intervene? This is a bad time for our country, folks. Simple mistake, you out. Like Friday said, greatest mistake is death. Let's come together. Let's think Liberia. Let us love Liberia and let's build Liberia. That's the message. It's no one man thing. Wherever you find yourself, it can be whosoever I will talk in. The next report from the National Security, I saw it, I felt sick to my stomach. And we asked the Liberian people, is this what you voted for? You're left better today? I mean, we need to ask this question. A lot of stuff, a lot of issue. The whole mansion seemed to be having this enchanted UP alliance. I know. I know the meeting that was held today, it ended in confusion. How about you know when you used to play checker, right? Your man come to win, you just hit the whole ball. And he said the gate ain't confusion. The meeting I was had at the executive mansion today and ain't confusion because somebody want to be superpower. And when we asked, was the president in the meeting? President Joseph Barger was here in the meeting. The meeting was held on the cabinet level, advisors and ministers and deputy ministers. It went late. We beg you, folks. When you see something, say something to make life grow better. When you hear something, say something to make life work better. Every agency, every ministry, we back in you. Thank God the government has decided to bring in the ombudsman. And I how you call him? The person that coming in is Kanga, one counselor Kanga. You all know him? And I people say, Stand on how you know. Don't worry about how I know. Fender Kanga, is that his name? 
Can somebody help me with that? You guys know him, right? Ava, that's a booklet. Yeah, hello, Kanzaro Kanga. What's his full name? Kanzaro Finle Kanga. Finle Kanga. He would be uh, information reaching the spoon desk. Would be the uh, uh, the man that would write these things. And uh, this week, the Supreme Court will speak on the turning position, and the, the the government will win, of course. But the government will pay a lot of money uh, because uh, information reaching out they got to sell to everybody, you know. But again, thank God they're getting the ombudsman, and that will be finally kind of if all goes well. Uh, that's the information reaching out. That's me. I saying that on spoon. Don't say the executive mansion plan. They are begging you. Don't go on social media and I be looking for the money. That how you can get people in trouble. I say my own way. Let it happen. Before you say, yeah, the executive mansion website. Mommy talk to us. Yeah, let's go home. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, good night. <laughs> <laughs> I will just I will talk briefly on the things we spoke about today. Since in fact we will talk more extensively on Luca and the LEC stuff tomorrow. I mean, if our officer in charge taking over a company over 1.3 million, I wouldn't be paying 600,000 when the CEO is on her way in two weeks to take over. I don't see the urgency to do that. I don't have all the details, but just from what I have, I don't see urgency. I will prioritize paying the benefit of the staff, which is smaller amount to make them comfortable and ready to work and leaving that huge investment with the management to, to take over and do. I don't know whether the board approved. If the board approve, I don't know what the board were considering when they made such such an, an, an approval. I, I will say that to President Boaka, we support you. I mean, everything you said during the campaign is what inspired us to follow you. The first round, we did not support you, but the second round, we felt surely that you're 100% better than George Weah. Even if you feel... That's why I can tell people. <laughs> Even I mean, let me not say that, so you don't give people comfort to do what they're doing. But uh, we believe in you. We believe you can do better. We want you to set the tone so that everybody across your government can know that it is not business as usual. The way to set that tone is just to do the right thing. Small right things can lead people to do good big things. Just small right things you do can pressure people to do big good things. So we encourage our president to continue to do that, lead the country by example, and we all will follow. We will follow you to the point where we believe you are heading in the right direction. We'll move from behind you to the point where we believe the country is not heading in the right direction. We are not bound followers, but we believe in you. We trust you. We did not vote for you because we know you are injured. We know you will make mistakes. And when we make those mistakes, we take ownership for those mistakes. We admit to those mistakes. We buy in shame to the seditions and say, yes, this is a mistake that we made, but we'll correct it. And when we correct it, we'll show the impact of our correction. We'll show the dividend to our people. They will see it and celebrate. And by that celebration, they will forget about the mistakes we made. But if we can do that, now moving forward. And Jimama raised a very important issue. I think it's been under the radar for long. But I disagree with her to some to some point. I support 100 percent the executive order issued by President Weah, that President Baka is maintaining. I disagree with the executive order when President Weah issued it on grounds that it was arbitrary. I said you cannot just make an executive order and say it takes effect effective immediately. When in fact people were already bringing their rubber on board, you should give a grace period, most of the time six, three months, two months, one month, so that people clear off. But we have that's my area, agriculture investment. I know what it means to specifically control the export. I know there are five exporters of TSR in the country. Five. The current capacity, the production capacity of all the rubber farms in the country is far below the capacity of these processors. So the processors are operating below their capacity. Most of the times what government do, they take action to protect infant industries. Basic economic theories on the industrialization. 
But there are concerns that the farmer have. The concerns the farmer have is, if you have just few buyers of rubber, there's a possibility where these few buyers could control price. So the solution is not to open up so much so that five companies, manufacturing companies in the country collapse and few middlemen enjoy by exporting unprocessed rubber. That is where we found ourselves. Few businessmen who are most of them not producing rubber, but are middlemen and buying rubber from people and exporting. You don't want a situation where the few businessmen benefit to the expense of manufacturing companies that are employing more people than them, that are paying more taxes than them. That's where we are. The solution that we have proposed was that government should come in and set price ceiling so that these farmers are not cheated. Regulations. That's why you're shaking your head. I the am. Reason, eh? No, I am. Price ceiling? Yeah, price ceiling. We can, go into that yeah, we can go into that discussion. But the argument, without knowing the details, without going through the details, the argument that just that, oh, is wrong to stop people from exporting raw, unprocessed rubber is not a fair argument. People are saying, instead of exporting the unprocessed rubber, when you have manufacturing companies in the country, five of them, that are producing below their capacity, why don't you sell to those manufacturers so that they can add value and export? Rather than exporting, I disagree with you. Yeah, yeah, but you can't. Yeah, but you can't. Yeah, but you can't. You can't. You can't force them to do that, especially when the international market is price is higher. What you do is you make it a free and competitive market. Then the local producer will raise their prices, so the, so so that the local manufacturers will raise their prices, so the local um, rubber planter and, and and will sell to them. But you can't make it where you have to you have to sell to me when the market the internet market is actually willing to pay more. I think look but, as but, a but country, that, but that, but wait, that, wait, wait, wait. as a country we need to move away from trying to create all these monopolies historically across the board in every country everywhere it does not work well for ordinary people. No, but it's the working monopoly very price well, is it's always it's higher than competitive well. prices. It's 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 working is working excellently well in Abidjan. It's working excellently well in all. Yeah, don't take your head out. It's working excellently well there. Now, the point, the point, the point, the point you're missing there is there's there's not a there's not a monopoly to an institution. It is. I come in. What is what yes, is working well in Abidjan? What is working well in Abidjan? Monopoly in the cocoa market? No, I'm not talking about cocoa, I'm talking about rubber, the control of the export. The control on the export of raw rubber. Is working well in Abidjan, but even Jetty is that a monopoly? That no value. You know what I'm saying? I said that's not a monopoly, but he's calling it. It is. It is because they all have monopoly. They all have the money. Money. They all have them belong to Joe We are and two other government officials. Why no, should yeah. we? Like so, uh, Mame, can you do your closing for us to go? No, it's after our time, though. Why should we suppress our like and our Indian man should kind of be a billionaire and what people cannot sell raw freely? Let me open a free market. This guy I'm talking about, he has a, a, a raw factory. Go there and see the man spend one million dollars. He got a factory and he telling the man, I will make you the sell the factory to me. Now, so, so, so that, Mama, that I, is, I understand, Mamba, you speaking. Nelson, can you come on? Do we have monopoly on wood rubber? No. But that's so what it is. Sir, can you tell us again, please? So, yeah. so, so you see, so you see, so you see, that's that's where the misinformation is. No, you got fire stone exporting. I mean, you got lack exporting rubber. You got fire stone exporting. You got lack exporting. You got Neymar rubber exporting. You got Lee Group exporting. You not get one exporter. There's so, no say the man will open a factory and he exporting. Why they want to? Why why they want to stop it? No, why I, just, you I, stop I, 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 mama, I, I beg you, mama, Angel, mama, do you do you have that story? Is there, is is there collusion? 
Because the reason why I'm asking you, I'm saying I'm missing information. I'm missing information. She has paid everybody in Liberia. He has paid everybody in Liberia to so suppress the people. Auntie Baba, we can talk about other stuff, but I think Robert, there is no monopoly on Robert. It's only. The reason why I'm saying this, Abba, right? Because I know some folks in this government, people, people that are in the raw business, hmm? there is no problem. I was invited to one of the Zoom meeting. And to tell you the truth, you go to Nimba or other places, you take your rubber, they compare it. For one of that bundle, it's like 600 bucks. You put it on the ship. Once they leave, your money hit their account. I had the entire scope. One of the guys that doing this rural business, right? I don't want to call their names, but this former uh, chairman, I think, for Liberty Party, he's from Nimba. He was with Charles Walker Brunskin, the papi, what's his name? Uh, you don't call him. No, no, I can call that guy but I'm not calling There are a lot, lot of them, right? He's seriously speaking. Can't wait. Because, I mean, that's what he does. Can't wait. So, yeah. So there will be no way that I will sit here. Maybe there's something your man, your friend, or the is doing. Maybe, maybe that's something. But, there's no, it, it, it's not there yet. I, I, I'm, no, uh, there, I, there, is, there is a band. There is it's a band. I want end. That that role play, I want end. Huh? What end is the band? There is a band on exploitation of rubber. Okay. Of raw rubber. rubber. Of raw yeah, rubber. Rubber. yeah, yeah, raw, raw and process. Correct, correct. It's a ban on that. So that is a form of monopoly or collusion at the best. And either way, it does not make for a better competitive market. All I'm saying is our people are poor and struggling. If you open that market, the prices at the least will go up. And then they can get more for the rubber sold are, here. Are you saying all of the country, all of the country, the one you don't channel it through one person? or through different set, for example, five stone, like what mommy naming them. My argument to you, the way Jetty got sold, sold, that single, right, to bring in steroid, right, as if I, it's not like that with rubber. Am I correct that to go black? Go ahead, Mr. Dwalu. Dwalu, go well, ahead. Let, let me say this. Most of the team mommy said, I don't have too much problem. This is my problem. This is a foreigner, but those of you who are seeing this is uh, racism and, and xenophobic, it's not. If you went to any country, in order for that country to grow, we must control our market. Why can't the government come to me and Dr. Professor Dwalu will give you one million build a plan? The reason for that is you actually want to indigenize your operation. But Jetty is literally controlling this market heavily. Heavily. Everybody in the country tells you this. Every rubber farmer tells you that he's controlling the market. And that's about design. And for me, I don't like that. Okay, so tomorrow yeah, yeah, we'll call Amin Moda. We'll call Amin Moda. And Amin Moda will explain this thing to us. Let's do that. I will jam Amin for far two minutes or so. He will come and he will explain this thing to us. Let that bring people hear where we are when you're talking about the, the rubber industry. A good point. Thank you very much, Andrew Mama. Uh, Mame is the last person. Let me finish up. Mame, please finish up your closing for us to go. Yeah, let me, let me, I will close on the rubber issue. I will close on the rubber issue. There is no monopoly. There is a good intention. There is a good intention by the government to grow and expand the rubber sector. You can go back and look at the numbers on production of rubber in the country. It keeps declining. There are a lot of factors responsible for that. The decision to protect infant industry. Not one, I say several of them, Lee Group, Nima Rubber, Lack, Firestone. These are manufacturers, manufacturing TSR, using the latex, the latex rubber to produce TSR. 
their manufacturing capacity is short of raw rubber. Every time they're looking all around to find raw rubber to process, they can't find it. The concern about the farmers, about price, is a legitimate concern. That concern can be addressed by the state. But to say, because you don't want to address the pricing issue, you should allow the manufacturing industry to collapse for a few middlemen who are exporting rubber to benefit, is wrong. That's where we stand. Why, why would the market- Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> guys, we got to go. We got to go, guys. We got to go. We got to go. Nelson, come on. Again, yes. please hold your thoughts. We're backing you. We got to go. Uh, and listen, uh, as my teacher would kill me tomorrow. All right. I want to say thanks to every one of you. A beautiful show, Auntie Mama. I want to say thanks to you, Auntie Mama. I've to thank you, Mambe, as always. That's a good place. I see you home. You don't have to leave. You just go to just get out of that chair. Thank you very much. You have a good evening, folks. A great show. Thank you. All uh, right. That's it. Thank you very much. As always, good to see you. I know you may see uh, Fatima. You know, but yeah, that way you kind of quiet because Fatima is not on the show. <laughs> but I'll regard to Fatima, though. I have to go, Nelson, before Angela. I see her stay sitting and she thinks I'm going to talk to her. Yeah, she, she, <laughs> she expecting to see. She asking, she asking if Azzy doing the background. <laughs> Azzy don't go on. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say coming to a hundred impact, but the folks have a good night. Thank you, Nelson. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, uh, again, we want to say thanks to all of you across the world. Thanks for being here tonight on this edition of the program Spoon Talk. It's been a great show. Um, thanks to you, your contribution on the show tonight. All of you who uh, tried calling but couldn't make it through the lines yet. You didn't make it through tonight, but kindly of call tomorrow. You might just be one of those persons that will be uh, fortunate enough to get through the lines. But we appreciate your comment, uh, your contributions in the comment section. There's absolutely no restriction to what you can say in there. Once you are being civil enough, abiding by uh, the very uh, standards there, you can express yourselves in the comment section as many times, uh, uh, you know, and, and that's the beauty of it. And we appreciate you for being there. Um, our audience on YouTube, thank you for being here tonight. Our folks on Facebook, Spoon TV, Fabric TV, and Super TV, we appreciate all of you tonight. And um, thanks to the thousands of you in Radio Land. You've been following... Uh, very closely, you charge your batteries and, and, and get your radio uh, ready across the country on 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 uh, Trust FM in Bomi County, on Premier FM in uh, Bone County, on um, Trend Radio in Grand Cru, or across the Spoon Network, Spoon FM, Fabric FM, Super. We appreciate you guys for being here tonight. We look forward to having a great show tomorrow. My name is Nelson Collier. Today we'll come your way again. Have a good night. Coming up at uh, 1 a.m. Liberian time will be the late night show. The late night politics is going to be very fascinating. You can make up time to join us. Until then, have a good night. And uh, let me say happy birthday to a few folks uh, celebrating their birthdays today. Kona Gato, an ardent follower of uh, Spoon Talk, always making a contribution in the comment section. Kona Gato, happy birthday. Michael Bowie, a good friend of mine in the Bad News area, you're celebrating your birthday today as well. Happy birthday. And to the thousands of you, yes, have a good night and bye bye for now. A special one from the CEO, Stan coming with the spoon. And your boy, Friday, the South Bend.